Hi. Hey, Antonia, how are you? Good, and you? I'm okay. Good to see you. Hi, Antonia and Robin. We're we're live since I didn't do a panelist link, and so um, I guess we'll just wait until we have a quorum. Okay. <clears throat> Nate, can I ask you about um, digital resources, subscriptions um, for research? And I sent you a couple emails on that. I know you're swamped on everything. Like looking yeah, at news. Go ahead. I asked accounting about that. Um, I'll, I'll ask again. So we, okay. sometimes we have subscriptions and sometimes they get funny about it. So. Um, okay. There's no way, I mean, I'm like, I have access to ancestry.com through work. Um, but genealogy bank is also really good. Right. And right. newspapers.com. I mean, that those are the, they're pretty essential for um, providing the context for any research on any form Bs that we want to do. So. Right. Yeah. Um, let me, I'll send that, I'll ask around again. Okay. So Michaela emailed and said she couldn't be here. And then um, Madeline can't join until a la little later. Okay. But and if I, Pat's where we'll have quorum, right? We may not. Yeah, we'll have to hang tight. Oh, here's Pat. Oops. <clears throat> Hi, Hetty. Hi there. Yeah, it was boring. <clears throat> Hi, Pat. Nice to see you. You're muted. <laughs> but I think you said. Thank you, Robin. I said <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> You're not in your red chair. You're in your white chair today. I'm in my well because I'm I'm not in, in my home with the red chair. <laughs> mm -hmm. I figured. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's who we're expecting, right, Nate? Yeah, Madeline will join us in a little bit. So I think this okay. is it for now. Okay. Um. So I will open the meeting at six thirty-four. Um, meeting of the Amherst Historical Commission on January 8th, 2024. I'm having a little trouble for some. Oh, I think I know. There we go. Uh, so I'm just going to read the preamble to our public meeting pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. General Law C-30A, Section 18, and pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, and extended by Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, and extended again by the state legislature on July 14th, 2022, and signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This public meeting of the Town of Amherst Historical Commission is being conducted by a remote participation. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing has been posted on the town's online calendar. Um, whoops. So the first uh, item on our agenda today is announcements. Um, I have two. Uh, one is in regard to um, the, I think I sent out an email announcement about a um, uh, a webinar this uh, Thursday. Um, if for anybody who's interested in uh, how historic districts are um, created, um, I don't have the information in front of me, but if anybody is interested and they want to send me an email, I can send the link again um, 
I think it's the Nash. It's I can't remember the name of the group, but it's this, it's a group that uh, is focused on um, historic commissions and their training. And then um, secondly, um, the nominations for and again, I'm not don't have it in front of me, but I did circulate it. Um, uh, the preservation award that came from um, Bonnie Eisman. Um, let me see if I can find that email. <laughs> I think um, to that, yeah, to the um Howard Shell Award sponsored by the Amherst Historical Society. Right. Hetty had responded and said uh, North Amherst Community Farm could be a suggestion. Yep. And um I'd be happy to second that idea. Um, I've been feeling like they're due for some sort of award for their pretty impressive effort to um, renovate the farmhouse there. And I was on the CPA committee while they came forward for funds for that. And um, we can get to uh, how that would be prepared when we go to our one year and five year goals, which I'm actually ready to present on. <laughs> so um, do you have any announcements, Nate? Uh, this evening, I had sent a, a letter um, with an updated form B for Grace Church. So I think that, that you know it's it's not um, I don't have any much to say about it, but I think uh, we'll see if Mass Historic will you know um, do that and then let you know let the town and Susanna know if the their form B is updated. But yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, I know it came in a little under the wire. <laughs> Okay, um, does anybody else have any announcements? Nope. I'm trying to. I'll say screen. that it looks like, uh, Robin, someone from the Emily Dickinson Museum may be here. Okay. And I don't know if we'd want to ask her to speak. Um, that way, if they, you know, I don't know if Jane will make it later, but we could move the agenda around. Okay. Um, so we want to do that now, uh, move, uh, Number five up to number two. Sure, we could ask. Uh, whoever's here to raise their hand for the Dickinson Museum, and we can. Yeah, all right. I'll promote you to panelist. Hello. Greetings. Hello. Hi, Hetty. Hi, Shantia. It's been a long time. Yep. <laughs> um, Jane is actually planning on presenting. I just told her that I would hop on and kind of keep track, and we will text each other as soon as we know that you're ready for us. So she would like to be here, um, but she can't be for a little while. So. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you were here, just in case you know something else. So. Yeah, no, she would she would really like to to be here to present. So I'll just hang out behind the scenes and uh, knit while we wait for for that agenda item. All right. All righty. And you'll see when she shows up, right, Nate? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. So with that in mind, then I think we're on to agenda item number two, which is discussion of our one and five year goals. Um, the first item under there is preservation plan comments. Um, I'm assuming that was just a follow up from last agenda. I don't have any new comments. Do you have anything to let us know about, Nate? No, uh, Shannon had said she was hoping to get a draft, uh, uh, if not last week, then this week, an updated version to the commission. So um, when I receive that, I'll send it along. I was thinking that maybe we'd have you know, would have, would have received it and we could have, you know, had something to say about it, but I think it'll just, we can keep it on as a placeholder. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so survey results. So hopefully you all um, saw, we finally managed to get the survey out and all of the commissioners responded in a very timely fashion. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, let's see if I have permission. Well, you know, I might need to, yeah. 
You should be able to, Robin, if you. Yep, yep. I'm just trying to figure out which thing it is I'm wanting to share. It's this one. Okay, has everybody seen my color coded Excel screen? Mm -hmm. Was that clear for everybody? You can just give a little thumbs up. Yes. We're good. Nate, can you see that? Yes. yes okay, yeah, that's, I'm, that's legible for me. I, I do have a okay. big monitor though. <laughs> okay. All right. Does anybody need it pumped up at all? I can do that. I can at least do a, actually, no, maybe it's not going to do that. All right. Never mind. So, all right. Um, so I pulled together um, this afternoon uh, the rankings for one year and five year goals and their relative importance to members of the commission. So this is our, our one year goals in ranked in order. Um, so that's just a average weighted score. Uh, five, years, five year goals, I took um, a couple of uh, goals that were split between one and five year. I put, um, I put the bylaw and deconstruction into five years because judging from how long it took us to do demolition, delay revision <laughs> one year is ambitious. <laughs> and then I put the uh, National Registered uh, District East Village expansion uh, assistance into the one year since that's pretty much ongoing right now. And then um, I have a third tab here, which just show everybody's priorities for what they'd like to work on. So um, in order of uh, importance, we had CPA funding goals, preservation restriction policy, um, inventorying underrepresented populations, general updates to the inventory, a training guide for commissioners. People were excited about that. Of our barn and outbuilding assessment program. Um, this is something that I had thought about a while ago, a demolition hearing signage. Uh, then we have the East Village expansion. Um, and that's the National Register District, not to be confused with the uh, local historic district project in that regard. Um, and then um, the low, our lowest scoring uh, item was outreach on preservation award nominations. But I will say that that is something that um, it would be awesome to have a volunteer, Hetty, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, <laughs> to take that on. Penny was, I think, the one commissioner who expressed interest in it. So that might be the one of the easier ones to assign. Um, and um, yeah, the Preservation Mass and um, Ashes Historical Commission also have their own award programs. Um, I don't have any information on the other two, but I, like I said, I did get that. I sent out that email from Bonnie Eisman. So Hetty, um, maybe I can just ask you at this point, since that's actually one of the most pressing items, um, are you willing to uh, take on that that task as part of your sure. work? Okay. Great. Um, and then our five-year goals in order were, um, number one was inventorying uh, the modern period in Amherst, which I was kind of excited about, um, a deconstruction bylaw tied, um, some interest in a five to thrive list, uh, then cemetery updates and the preservation funding guide were uh, next, uh, Jamal structures, national register nominations, um, affirmative maintenance bylaw, and walking tours, uh, rounding at the bottom. So um, I think the next, I'm just looking at the time here. Um, the next question is sort of uh, figuring out who to assign a primary uh, responsibility for following up on any of these. Um, and I don't know exactly the best way to go about that. I did, like I said, I did do this table which shows um, each of the projects and people and their level of interest. So the best thing, since we don't have a full commission right here, the best thing might be for me to um, maybe make assignments based on people's rankings and um, check in with people by email. Does that seem like a, a good idea? Feel free to 
express an affirmative or yeah i was going to just jump in the preservation um restriction policy you know we've talked about that i know ben did a while ago too and we had some draft documents yep and i've asked um the town uh, attorney to um develop a template or two uh restriction uh, in part because we have some outstanding CPA projects that really need their balances closed and, you know, are essentially done except for the restriction. And so, yeah. you know, I'd like to keep working on that. I feel like we're, we had a pretty good discussion a, a bit ago. Um, there's notes from that. And I, I think that um, it would be nice to formalize it and then, you know, have that. And we can provide that to the CPA committee. Um, and then it could go hand in hand with some funding um, guidelines. You know, I know some communities, for instance, I know I'm switching topics, but with CPA funding, they might limit the amount of funding, um, you know, per per property or applicant, either in a time frame or generally. Um, and so I think, you know, we had kind of talked about, excuse me, if there was a funding threshold over which a permanent restriction would be necessary, or um, so I think, you know, it, it goes, you know, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, but I'd like to work on that policy. I, I can, you know, kind of formalize some of the stuff we talked about and then um, bring that back to the commission. Yeah, so it'd be sort of like how we did, uh, did demolition delay with Ben. Like he kind of worked on the parameters and brought it to us for our input without somebody on our side having to kind of write and design the whole thing. Right. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Great. Okay. Um, does anybody have any uh, questions or comments on our goals going forward? Happy to hear any feedback. I just kind of threw this out there at you guys. <sighs> well, thank you for doing the survey. I thought it was really great. Okay, good, good. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, it, it brings a good focus, Robin, to, to our work. Okay. All right, so look for an email for me for your potential assignments. I'm just going to make sure that I save this before it all um, disappears. Oops. Madeline is in the audience. Oh yeah, her hands raised. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Welcome back, Madeline. You're muted. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Yay. Hey. Hi, everyone. Welcome. How's that baby of yours? She's good. She just turned four months old. So oh, terrific. She's now a baby, not just a newborn. <laughs> yeah, she's doing good. Thanks. Good. Thanks for um, arranging your schedule to be able to join us. It's really yeah, no problem. nice to see you again. Nice to see you guys. Um, so maybe you're following along. We were just uh, looking at the survey results for the commission and having developed a one in five year five year goals. I'll be sending out um, uh, potential just assignments just to give people a focus for the work that they want to do on the commission in their off hours, which we all have so many. <laughs> um, so next up on the agenda is um, updates. Um, documentation of 140 South Street. Um, Hetty and I uh, went to a site visit um, a couple of weeks ago in a very chilly, I think it was a Friday morning. Um, we took uh, photos of the interior and exterior of the building. Um, and following uh, that meeting, I've, I've always been sort of fascinated by how small the footprint is of the main block of this building. I did a little bit more. Um, uh, well, I couldn't do more deed research because the deed trail ended um, in, with uh, Simeon Edwards, who's listed, I think, on the 1860 map. But I was able to trace his ancestry back to um, a Jonathan Edwards, which is also the name of a very famous reverend from Northampton, who there's, as far as I know, no relation. But he was the um, 
son of, is it Simeon Strong? Um, and um, he's listed on a 1772 map, which I hadn't seen before um, in that area. Um, so, um, and also also a, served in the Civil War was in, in that Civil War, uh, Revolutionary War and was a Minuteman. So it really interesting, um, interesting history. And um, I pursued a little bit more information. I wrote to um, Eric Rodoya. He used to um, be the director of Historic Deerfield. And um, he gave me some feedback. Um, he said he, uh, and he let me know that he thought he could find, there's some um, granite veneers on the front foundation um, that he probably, that he thought they were probably from, uh, quarried from Pelham and might have, could probably find a way to salvage and, and repurpose them. So um, I wrote a couple of uh, emails to uh, Nate and the owners, just to seeing if we could arrange to get some more documentation as the demolition progresses um, of, of the frame and the interior structure to see if we could date it um, more officially and then um, perhaps salvage that granite. And possibly there were some, also some very, well, I'm sorry, I didn't get materials out to you, but there were some very wide um, pine floorboards in that first section of the house that um, were undisturbed up to this point. So um, that was really, um, I was glad that we went and um, I'm gonna take that information and prep a form B that we can hopefully submit um, to document the building so that it's on record after its demolition. Um, any questions or comments on that property? Robin, this is the Southeast Street house? Yep, yep. Okay. So, um, so probably Eric Rodoya thought it was around mid 1800s. Um, this other map connected to Jonathan Edwards is from 1772, but the house is in a slightly different location. That could have been a different structure. Yeah, I think, yeah, during the demolition hearing, you know, Robin had done some title and it was hard to confirm the date of this construction of, you know, there's three properties we looked at and it's possible that some of the material could have been salvaged, right? But it looked like there had been a structure there agreed a different location and different names and it was unclear if we could, you know, um, make that conclusion and so i think it's great that they're able to go in and look at it and now we can document it it is difficult sometimes to you know pull that information um and confirm it yeah i mean the one thing that we could pretend if we can get to the framing before it's destroyed um to check for uh saw marks and nails those are the only thing two things left i think um, in terms of dating materials and and construction methods, um, yeah, and how the how the framing is joined, um, so that'd be interesting to see. Have you heard anything from the owner or no project manager? No, no, no. We haven't. You know, I think they, as far as I know, they hadn't applied for a permit yet to do that work, but they you know, oh, okay. they say it's forthcoming. But it, um, if you, Robin, I mean, you have the email. If you want to reach out and say, could we coordinate? So another visit if you wanted. I mean, they seem really willing. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know I, I sent everything like over the break. So no, that's not the best time to. Um, but, but I, I think, think it would be, I mean, and I don't know if you could attend Nate. I don't, I've never been, uh, I've never been to a, a structure, you know, like if we're looking for, um, and maybe Madeline also might be um, available or Hetty um, to help document the physical resources. I yeah. Mean, I think, you know, that would, and, you know, certainly some of like the structure is going to be behind the walls. It's going to be part of the demolition process, but. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if they'll, how they'll demolish it. Um, you know, if they'll expose anything. So. Um, we could see if they would, uh, you know, my thought is they come in there and they just have a big bucket and a um, dumpster, you know, and they just will take Rip that thing down. Yeah. Yeah. Take it down in like two hours. Unfortunately, that's right. really, it's really quick, but right. yeah, I mean, other than that, it's photographs with good lighting. And then, you know, we could always ask someone to help um, 
you know, um, look at those photographs to see, you know, what kind of right saw marks is a quarter saw is it, you know, what, you know, right, right. Um, you know, even like nail heads. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was, I mean, the, the framing is the only thing that I don't know if they think they, they'd be willing to open up a wall or something so that we get a look and to see like, the joinery. Yeah. And, could, yeah in a corner too. I mean, it could be that, right. Sometimes, um, you know, especially where, you know, if there's any load bearing points and we can see the joinery. So sometimes things are reused and it's not, it's not actually not load bearing, you know, it's not, you know, it's repurposed as building material, but not in the way it was originally used. So sometimes right, like, right. timber frames will be reused as some supporting yeah. material, but not in the way you can see like different <laughs> notch marks yeah. or other things. So, yeah. And they, I, I was going to ask this. Um, I know that um, um, my brain is just really slow today. <laughs> uh, our town manager, his name is escaping oh, me. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't have said that yet, Paul. Paul Bachelman. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, I know that he expressed a lot of interest in the, uh, the East Amherst district. And this really is like, you know, a pretty old house from them. If just if you just want to forward any materials to him that you think that he would find interesting sure. and useful, and let us let him know what we're hoping to be up to. Um, OK, any other questions or comments on that item? Okay, and then uh, Wildwood Cemetery is on here, uh, I think because we discussed it last time and um, I don't have a further update. My hope is to um, get a uh, revise, uh, I offer to uh, Rebecca Frick to um, provide some edits on the Form B that she's preparing and um, also looking toward maybe getting her help documenting some of the cemetery grounds and the burial plots. Um, and I think the form B is kind of the next step. I need to kind of build out a plan for that whole area, but I would think that we'd want to do a form B, uh, update the form B for the house, and then it could be possibly be a, a national Re register nomination property, but we are not there yet. Yeah, we could, we could, we could leave it on. I let her know that, you know, she didn't need to attend tonight. It's just an ongoing, um, agenda item just so we don't forget about it and now that yeah. there's on the ground it will take a bit but I think um, you know this spring documenting the grounds will be important and trying to confirm um, you know plots or other markers and photographic documentation so there's a simple a simpler uh, form for cemeteries and grounds and then you can do a more in-depth form uh, you know previously when we had the town had submitted or any community for cemeteries would just be a really, it'd be one picture of the whole cemetery and then a little narrative. And now the expectation is it's a little, there's a lot more documentation, especially something of this size. Yeah. It'll take a bit of an effort. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, the, so Wildwood Cemetery is um, significant in Amherst for it being our, I guess our first and only, um, well, yes, it's our only uh, garden cemetery, right? The garden cemetery movement so okay oh that was well timed uh so we're up to uh item number four the presentation of changes to the interior of the jones library regarding the expansion project and there's going to be a discussion and a vote on tax credit so i think i'm going to let madeline take over at this point as vice chair um i'm going to be recusing myself uh related to my work at MHC. And then for anyone who's here in the audience who's uh, will present or wanna be um, part of the panelists, you can raise your hand and you'll be, we can promote you over to. And then they, I mean, I seem to recall um, whenever Jane recused herself, she would mute her microphone and take herself off screen. Is that? Yes, yeah. A standard protocol? Okay, all right. So take her away, Madeline. <laughs> Bye, Robin. Um, yeah, so my name is Madeline. Hold oh, sure, hold go ahead. I just want to promote everyone before we, I just want to make sure you're not going to get started. Okay. Yeah, okay. do you want to just see? And I'll make you co-host as well. I just have to slowly work down the, the hands. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to. That's fine.
I think everyone's joining us now, so we're okay. Do you want to set us up, or uh, if you 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 I think we're all set if you want to. Okay, so today we'll be um, reviewing the interior changes to the um, to the Jones Library. Um, so that we can issue um, our letter, um, whether we recommend the um, this the application to MHC um, for the federal tax credits. Um, so today we've asked um, the architects to just really walk us through the interior changes, um, what will be preserved and what will be um, altered in each of the interior spaces. Um, so in reviewing interior changes to a historic building, it's really important to identify the tangible architectural components that convey the building's sense of time and place. These are, um, or it's, it's historic character. So this doesn't mean we need to keep every aspect of a building. Um, it's just our duty to identify the, these character defining um, elements. So I sent around earlier the National Park Service's preservation brief kind of on this issue. Um, if an interior has been modified by additive changes and if changes have not acquired significance, it may be relatively easy to remove the alterations and return the interior to its historic appearance. If an interior has been greatly altered through subtractive changes, there may be more latitude in making further alterations in the process of rehabilitation um, because the integrity of the interior has been more compromised. So there's just ways to evaluate the changes to each interior space. Um, and we just have to kind of consider why the Jones Library is historically significant. You know, it was constructed as this sort of domestic um, building to sort of resemble a house so that it was more attractive and maybe more comfortable for visitors um, to, to sort of, a, you know, to come to. So um, we'll just, I'd like to go through each of the interior spaces if if we could. Um, I'm not sure if what has been uh, put together for the presentation today. We we have a slide deck um, that we can share. I'm Ellen Ansloney. I'm a principal at Feingold Alexander. I've been working on this project from the beginning. Um, and Tony Shaw is going to take us through. But I just wanted to say one quick thing about us. In uh, Feingold Alexander, we've been in business for over 55 years. And the focus of our business has been working on historic properties. So we don't like to toot our own horn, but we're the experts at this. I just want to relay this to folks is that um, people hire us specifically when they're dealing with historic buildings, because we are sensitive to what's happening, right? So we're not the kind of firm that comes in and just takes stuff away just to take stuff away because we don't like it. That's not how we work. That's not in our DNA. And the way what we're doing, how we're working with the library is to get the program that's the library needs into the addition and the existing building. So that's always a challenge. And the other piece of the challenging puzzle here is all the existing plaster has asbestos in it. So it all has to come out. So for that to happen, we have to take the trim, the trim off and then put it back on. So this is a huge task that um, we don't often encounter. Um, but that's what we're doing. I just want to folks to understand it's a, it's a huge task what we're doing here. And we are keeping, and Tony will take us through this, as much of that historic fabric as we can, because that's in our DNA. That's what we do. I just wanted to get that out there. So not to hold us up, Tony, do you want to start sharing and, um, and get the show on the road? And it is a lengthy, um, slide deck, but we will go through it. And Tony, I'll let you set it up. Go ahead. I, I don't want to step on your show. 
Oh, no, no worries, Alan. Um, thank you very much. And great to see everyone tonight. And as Alan said, um, my name is Tony Shaw. I'm the principal director of design of the firm. And also uh, joining us is some additional colleagues, Josephine uh, Penta and also uh, Jim Alexander is in the wings. And I'm going to try to um, set this up. And as Ellen said, we have a number of slides to go through, and we can certainly get into as much specificity and detail as you would like. Uh, but as as we stated from the outset, really the intent is that the vast majority of what we're trying to hold on to and preserve is to is to retain um, the mill work uh, to the greatest extent that we can, and particularly attention working around things such as uh, you know careful millwork details, fireplaces, molding chair rails, picture rails, wainscoting, paneling. These are the things that are particularly germane and particularly historically defining characteristics of your beautiful library. Um, and I think one of the things that we also think about is how to try to preserve and keep intact. And as Ellen pointed out, where we have to remove is that we will essentially remove very carefully and then put back once the place has been restored. So I'm just gonna lead you through space by space. Um, and um, there's again, some amount of detail, but in, in some ways, I'm going to try to be sort of overarching in the descriptor, and then we can always get into the particulars. So, of course, this is the overview, and we're going to start with level one. First. Tony, one quick thing. We thought it might be helpful if we're allowed to go through the slides, mm -hmm. and then if folks could take their note, take notes, we can come back to those questions. But uh, it is quite lengthy, and we thought it okay. might be comprehensive to do it that way. Yeah, thank you, Ellen, and, and please um, forbearance on that. But uh, in order for us to try to get through this material for you and not abuse your time, I think let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to just literally go through space by space. Um, so level one, this starts first here with the main entry vestibule area that you come in to the uh, library. And essentially the key takeaway from this is that everything is going to stay. So some of this, again, will be removed as a result of dealing with the issues surrounding the plaster and otherwise, but once it's removed and everything is put back, we will put back what essentially is here. So the intent here is to essentially retain and place back in kind as is. So this will Tony, work. One quick thing, I'm sorry, just yes. to set it up. So what we've done is um, is we've taken all the all the rooms. <clears throat> and this is from the PNF, I believe, that um, was issued. So we took all the rooms, uh, we have put them in a spreadsheet, which is at the end of this um, slide deck in which we can get to you. And then and we took photo of each of the spaces. So each room you're going to get, it's essentially the same setup, floor plan, photograph or photographs, and then across the top, and we can zoom in a little bit so folks can read it, what, we're, what the overall uh, work is in that room. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Ellen. And I think for just graphic purposes, when you see a plan or in, colored in orange, like here, that is the particular area that is being addressed. So that's the main entry vestibule, which is shown in here. And then the photographs, uh, which we've tried to include mm -hmm. where relevant, shows a particular image and the orientation is showing which way it's facing. Plan is always north in all of these instances, uh, uh, page up. So this, for example, is looking at the south uh, elevation in this particular entry vestibule, which is the main entry itself. So again, I'm going to just try to go through this um, uh, because if some of the later program spaces get into more into details. As we move then from that entry vestibule, now we're in the main front entry hallway, uh, which is this area here in room 101. Um, and again, the particular things that are, are germane, these images that are shown ranging from 63 so the 67 are, are shown to the right. And so you can see here clearly what each of these photographs represent and their particular orientation based on the way the arrows are pointing. Um, and one again, the key thing about this particular space, again, is that everything will be retained in place, including all the framework around the elevator door, for example, and basically re restored and put back where needed. So this is uh, essentially going to retain the defining characteristics of this space so it will look the way it is now. And uh, something like the flooring would that would be? Flooring is going to be new. Uh, what we're really addressing here is in particular the focus on millwork, um, the, the, the historically defining characteristics. And that is why we're seeing in these particular elevations, all the attention is revolving around millwork. Okay. 
So again, the intent here is essentially to restore and, and put back in place what exactly exists here now. As we move to the next space, uh, this is after you pass the entry hall, now we're in the entry foyer, again, in area 101A. Um, and again, the photographs to the right uh, show the different viewpoints taken in that space, uh, seen in the far right. And in this uh, particular area, this is sort of a mixture of what's being preserved and what is being um, is being removed. Um, and I'm gonna have Josephine actually get into a little bit more into the details that particularly relate to this space. So Josephine, if you wanna talk and I can use my cursor. Sure, sure. We could look at um, U75 first in that photograph. We will be retaining um, the two archways. The archway on the right will remain in place. The archway on the left will be relocated. And um, the percentages you see on that south wall um, is because of that. Those two will be um, retained and the shelving will be removed. As far as... And what will be in mentioned. place of the, the shelving? Sorry. In place of the shelving? So this is all reconfigured. This is where the new egress stair will be located. There's so there'll be an, a new staircase introduced into this space. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Will so there be a doorway into that staircase? Or will yes. it? Okay. Yes. If Tony, you could just point to yeah. the door there. Yeah. So right so, here. Yeah. Right here. So this. So uh, what this plan is showing here, this is your existing plan right now in 101A, okay. and this is the change that results from the introduction of the new staircase. So essentially these areas here, you can see what's being modified um, as a result of that. But the example that Josephine just described, that one archway, which is dashed in here, is essentially going to be um, relocated, which is shown here as a result of the changes in this plan. Okay, so the room will be, sorry, I'm trying to understand this plan. This is the same. Yeah, so okay. this, this is the proposed plan that changes this plan here. So you just have to imagine this layout is overlapping this layout. So what you're okay, seeing and the, in the orange right. is what's, what's being changed. So here, this plan here. should be, if we were to look at this picture, it would be as though this plan were turned upside down just to... Sort of yeah, yes. I mean, yes, yes kind that's of. correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so that, that archway, for example, um, which is dashed in, is shown relocated um, okay. as a result of the change of the design. Okay, I'm going to keep going because what, what we're really trying to point yeah. out also in cases like this. When we have to modify the plan as a result of the change in things like stairs or other things being introduced, again, the attempt is where we're, we're always capable of doing, we basically keep millwork uh, as is and return in place. But when things modify, such as an example of that arch, we are relocating that particular trim work, but it's going to re reuse and repurpose the millwork so that we are reusing it as opposed to removing it. We're okay. just relocating it. That's I think we also, so this this is important for us to know that the interior kind of space of that, um, just so we're on the same um, kind of wavelength moving forward. So this interior space will have a, a, a wall sort of bisecting it in the future. So that, that's okay. correct. That, that's a modification that we yeah. would want to know about. Yes. For example, that's what if you're referring to this, this is the wall that is going to bite, 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 bite sect here because of the fact that this is coming out uh, in order to accommodate the new stair. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Great. Could keep going. Yes. And thank you for the questions. I know that this is gets pretty detailed. Um, this next space, um, room 102, uh, essentially you can see here, this is to the right of, you know, the existing stair entry hall. And in this case, this is the center administrative office area. And almost everything stays in this in this area, with the exception of one set of shelving on the south wall, um, which is proposed to be removed. Um, and I, again, Josephine, if you want to mention anything related to this, 
Um, so in 102, it's mainly on the west wall, which is image number 69. Um, as you can see there, we have um, the door and frame and then casework to the left, and, or millwork to the left, and that millwork will have to be removed. Um, this is where the new um, automated handling um, system will be located. Um, and so we will be keeping that door and frame in place and pinning the door shut. Okay, so we just, I think moving forward in this presentation, I think we really do wanna know more than the millwork is, is really good to know about, but we also wanna know about um, the modifications to the plan and then also sort of new mechanicals that are being introduced to um, these types of spaces. So it's important for us to know about the um, this automated book system that's going to be introduced here because that's that sort of changes the character of the space. So, right. So just so, going forward, yeah, let's make sure that we um, mention these types of sure. changes. So and this will... we can do that. One quick thing, though, that book sorter is essentially a piece of equipment. It can it's like a Xerox machine. It can be removed. OK, it's That's not built in. Too. Yeah, it's, it's not, not built, built in. in. It's a it's a piece of technology that basically sorts the book when people deposit. So it's able to help facilitate the library's ability to handle material yeah. at a much greater level. OK, OK. And, and so when I know, so I, just, I know you said key questions to the end. Um, I just want to ask when you say um, that a percent of millwork will be permanently removed, uh, does that mean that it won't be reinstalled in another location or would it be stored? I know sometimes you say it's, it will be removed and reinstalled in the same place. But I don't see that um, any notes about it being reinstalled elsewhere. So on the south wall here, you're saying that you know 30% of the millwork will be removed permanently. What happens to that 30%? Does it get reused elsewhere or does it get put in storage or does it get um, thrown out? Doesn't get reused in the building. It can it can go wherever folks want it to go, right? They I don't think this the storage space in the library to store it, but if there was somewhere that the town wanted it to go for future that could happen yes i might elaborate on that just a little bit ellen too we talked this morning there are some cases you know where we're going to be patching to match existing woodwork you know where we maybe have to modify a door frame where we can use some of this material which we're removing we may use to you know i guess we used to call it sistering or dutchman to fill in pieces that have to be made to look continuous. So we're saying remove because in fact, we, we don't know how much of that we can reuse or if some of it will just have to go into storage or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll keep going. Um, and this is the material return um, portion in room 102A, uh, which you can see again highlighted in, in orange here. Um, this is uh, the finance office. Um, and part of this again, will have modifications here. This wall is going to be removed. Um, and as a result of that, some non-original millwork uh, will be removed, but the, West, the rest of it will either remain and or be reinstalled in place. Uh, so again, that is a result of the change in this particular configuration in this area. The details like the window trim and all of that that you can see heaven in, in view 70, those will be um, basically in place um, and remain uh, after the area has been renovated and put back. So those are the critical things that we are going to hold. So largely, it's um, non-original millwork. This is non-original. Like so, for example, okay. view B, because we're removing this piece of wall in order to accommodate the the book sorter equipment. Uh, so that door and that frame uh, will essentially um, not uh, be uh, kept, um, but 
as we said before, certainly if there's a building in some other instance that the town would like to consider reuse of this, uh, that certainly can be brought up into consideration. Okay. Uh, this next area is the CERC work area, room 103. Um, and in this case, uh, this is the director's office here. And again, because we are moving some of the walls, this will result in some loss of original work work and shelving. Um, and we're essentially going to be looking to try to uh, hold on to as much as we can um, in this space. Um, but the areas like, for example, the safe door upstairs to the administrative offices, along with much of the shelving and other work, original work work, um, we have to modify because of the change in the way this is being done. But when the cases where we have the walls remaining and not being modified, uh, this will be essentially kept in place. Um, and so, for example, I'm just going to go to this next slide to show you what I mean. So here you can see this particular area in room 103, um, which is, you know, the director's office area. And this is this area is opening up in order to allow the staff to really work a lot better. Um, but some of the contributing factors like for example, this area, which is seen in this photograph D, um, which has millwork and areas that exist, we are essentially going to relocate that to here. Mm -hmm. um, so again, the dashed line represents, and that you can see it's highlighted in this area in the photograph, is shown in the floor plan, and then is shown proposed to be redone um, in this particular area because, again, we have a new staircase essentially coming in here that is that is changing all of this area here. That's the result of this plan change in this area 103. Okay, I'll keep going. Um, in the room 103A, uh, this is essentially a currently accessible entryway. There's a bit of mixture going on here because this is, a, is the side entry, as you know, coming into your library here. Um, but I don't know, Josephine, do you want to go into this a little bit more in detail? <clears throat> sure. Um, so as you can see from the photos here, um, everything on the, every, I shouldn't say everything, but the fireplace, um, as you can see, is remaining in place. The, the walls to either side of it will have to be um, removed for the proposed um, layout. So um, that's the millwork that we're indicating there. Um, tough to see from 78, but um, most of that millwork there, whoops, <laughs> I think most of that millwork there should um, also be um, put back in place as well. Yeah, most of this is essentially being kept and mm -hmm. and reinstalled in place. Um, yep. So. It is is really the um, the north wall, uh, which the fireplace remains, but essentially this area, as a result of the plan and modifications, uh, has some impact. It looks like the west wall also is losing mm -hmm. all of the trim. So is that doorway remaining, or doors, or is that changing? You mean this area? Right. Right. That will be also removed. That that doorway and wall there will be removed because that 103A is, is connected to the CERC work firm. It's all one big space now in the proposed layout. The, this is one large space. Yes. Can you describe that a little bit more? 103A is connected to the two rooms that we just reviewed previously. If you could slide up, Tony. Good. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. All right, it's around the corner. 102, 103, and 103A are all connected. Okay. The proposed layout. And the fireplace is, no, it's removed. Okay. Fireplace remains. Oh, remains. Yeah, actually right it there. remains, yeah. But to your point, what Justin just said, you can see just the bare tip of 103A that we're just talking about right here in this plan. And you can see the changes because again, this whole administrative area is opening up um, in order to facilitate the staff operations um, for the directory and for the director and her staff. So, so all of these sort of smaller, rooms, this, this area is opening up. But things like the fireplace, window trim details, all of that millwork surrounding that, that is going to be essentially uh, kept in place, um, you know, reinstalled and, and, and redone. 
type what's of things like this is relocated. Yeah, you know, what's happening on the back of the stairs on that wall? It looks like there's shelves in light gray where the you know on the that's, eastern end. That's that's right. Those are bookshelves that are located there at the moment. Are they repurposed from anywhere else or those shelves currently aren't. I believe those are the ones that we actually have in our program counts for MBLC for what we needed to get in that space. We could double check on that, but um, we um, we will need to have some of those um, bookshelves probably, um, but we can circle back and take a look at that wall and see if that's potential for maybe relocation of some of those other shelves. Yeah, I, th I think in general, um... What we're particularly focusing in on is the highly detailed millwork, especially surrounding fireplaces, door frames, wainscoting, uh, those areas um, where, where we're trying to maintain, you know, and restore or keep in place. Things like book bookcases, bookshelves, um, these, um, in certain cases, um, they're essentially not being kept because the programmatic needs for the library are changing. And so where we talk about things like bookcases, um, in instances like that, um, unless it's required due to the library um, requirements, uh, particularly related not just the library, but the MBLC Mass Building Library Commission requirements, um, we are essentially not um, keeping things like these kind of shelving elements unless it's necessary from a programmatic standpoint. Okay, I'll keep going. Um, mm -hmm. So the other areas, um, 104 and 105, again, as a reminder, this is right at the, you know, side entry to your library, these two spaces, um, you know, and they're small, small areas, but essentially it's the shipping and receiving areas here. Uh, but in this instance, uh, the millwork is going to be, again, removed once we restore the place and then put back. So this, this area is, in, in many sense, um, being largely kept in place um, with the only exception that a part of the west wall here um, is, has to be, um, you know, more more work. But we're trying to, in this case, hold on to this defining characteristics, particularly when you come in from that side entrance in 105 here, uh, which you can see in view number 80. <clears throat> Excuse me. And things, of course, like window frame openings like that, these are all be kept and preserved in place. Okay, uh, next space is room 106. Um, this is now the large kind of central barrel vault uh, reading uh, space, this lovely space in your current library. Um, and this is sort of um, a little bit of a mixture here. Um, so of things like the plaster crown molding, um, things like original millwork on the north um, and east walls, these things will be retained. Um, and things that you see visible like 117, 114, 115 um, in those particular instances. Uh, some of the, um, a little bit of the impact will occur on some of the doorway uh, areas because we are again having to open up uh, this particular space more as a result of the modifications in the, in the plan. Um, so the intent really is again to maintain uh, most of the critical areas, especially revolving around plaster millwork, you know, openings, wainscoting, but there is some um, modifications as a result of changing up some of the things like the walls in order to open up the library. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. And then as we continue, um, essentially north of that barrel vaulted space, which is the adult Dictionary of this room 107 here, um, which currently right now is your uh, fiction stack areas. This is the Palladian window room. So one of the things that, and that particular Palladian window that we're referring to in image 113 is here. Um, so uh, what isn't showing up in this particular floor plan, of course, is beyond this Palladian window is the expansion for the addition, uh, which is of course north of this area. So part of the um, plan uh, issue is that we're opening up this adult fiction area to connect here to here. Um, so we are retaining this whole Palladian uh, millwork uh, treatment, but uh, we are uh, cutting down and opening up the center 
area because right now, of course, this is an exterior window in your current library. But once we build a new addition, uh, you know, in front of this and behind us, we are literally connecting through from this space into the new addition. So that particular opening, which as you can see dash in orange here, this particular area is going to be removed in order to create that opening through the Palladian arched opening here. But the rest of the trim work, everything else uh, will remain in kind and in place as is. Okay, um, this room 124, uh, this is uh, the youth computers area here, uh, outlined in orange. Um, it's, you know, kind of the children's room circulation nonfiction. Um, uh, this area already previously underwent major renovations in the past, and most of the historic fabric was not present as a result of those renovations. But I know, Josephine, do you want to elaborate a little bit more about this? Well, we had a hard time getting finding photographs that actually show some of that fabric because a lot of it I think is hidden um, or a couple things are hidden. Um, but uh, the the gist of it is that yes, a lot has been changed in the previous um, renovation. And so um, looking at these walls now, it's still kind of tough to tell, but um, most of um, what we're showing here um, is uh, trying to see if I can find a different image to show you, but yeah, I mean, our proposed layout has this all reconfigured, but um, there isn't much retained from the 1927 portion. This is mainly the 90s work that we're looking at here on the left plan image. Okay. So in other words, not much of this was actually original anyways, as a result of right. past renovations. Okay, we'll keep going. Um, room 127, um, this is the youth fiction for the older children's. Um, so we are in this case going to be removing a portion of the North Wall and explain that in a minute here. But in this particular instance, um, we are going to, uh, as a result, uh, lose some of this shelving here, um, but we're going to be relocating the east wall, which is here, and I'll show this in a minute. Um, so it's going to relocate all of that, you know, beautiful millwork, which you can see in image number 95. So that is going to be um, basically relocated as a result of a plan change in this area. And the fireplace, excuse me, the fireplace that currently exists, which is in this west wall here, shown in image 93, this remains. So you can see here in this instance what, what I'm talking about. So again, because we're moving in a non uh, code compliant uh, fire stair or you know egress stair here, this whole plan area is opening up. So that uh, detailed wainscoting and mill work and all of this trim work around that east wall, which you can see dashed in here, is going to be relocated to here as a result of the opening up of this whole plan. Um, so we're going to put it back, but in a new location as a result of the change in the plan from this to this. And again, this is the, the fireplace, which currently exists that will remain as is in its current configuration. Okay. Just say that this is, for example, when we talked earlier, and I think Nate brought this up about the stuff being removed. There may be cases here when we're moving this paneling where we'll want to patch certain uh, certain areas with some other paneling we've taken from somewhere else to make this seem feel seamless and like it really belongs uh, on this other wall. So you know there are these small areas where we'll have to have trim, we'll have to fill in some areas, and we can use some of the removed work to com complete the picture, as it were. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the reuse of elements like that, if we can salvage it and repurpose it, of course, we will do that um, and 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 use that to, um, because the, we know the mill, original millwork was of that same era and same um, species of wood. But in that room, so the, the, sorry, the bookshelves will be this sort of 
new shelving, they'll meet the new shelving requirements. So those will be removed. Is that right? Or will they be retained? Josephine, you want to elaborate on that? We will be retaining um, the, we might not have the full depth for shelving there. We do meet the program requirements um, for the book counts um, without them. So we will see what we can do with the depth of, of that. When we, when we're, when we're in construction, we'll see what we can do with the depth of that. Um, and just as a reminder, this 127A um, stair that, that was one of the MBLC requests of um, for sightline visibility and um, program spaces um, to have that also removed. Tony, just to also um, reiterate yes. that. Yeah. Um, I think that I think that I'm not sure if that comes up in later images, but the, we, we, if we do have it, we're just going to point out that those instances of those staircases are being removed um, because it has to meet new code requirements, which they don't, as a result of also the change in the design. Sorry, can you scroll up to the previous slide just to show the re the room again? Yes. So for instance, in the in the new proposed floor plan, like right now this room is like wrapped in 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 uh wood, essentially, right? Trim and bookcases. So if you go down to the proposed floor plan, Jim, to your point, where there's that orange dotted line showing the wall being removed, you know, would you carry trim over now to that new door? I mean, like are you gonna, you know, would you try to kind of keep that same feeling or is there just gonna be, you know, an end to to the to the woodwork so like you know in this area right right here right like what's happening there if you sorry my you know you move the screen but um yeah i think it's true i think yeah, i think what we'll do there nate is evaluate it and infill it with uh paneling if we can right I mean, because to me that it's me that would be okay you know um you you know you have some end point to the trim here whereas it used to go along the dotted line as the wall and now it'll end and so if that right. could be continued then you know, it's a it's a much more consistent with the current character of that room to have the trim. You know, just make that connection, right? That bridge, right? Just between um, where yeah, the dotted line going. and the new line, new orange line. I think that would be the goal. Yeah, yeah. Was, was to make that feel consistent and continuous. Yeah, no, we we agree. I mean, I think that's a very good point you're raising, Nate, and we're sensitive to again the coming back to the defining characteristics um, balancing between the fact that we're changing it, but you also want to be certain that it looks complementary and not an afterthought. Right. So very good point. Yep. And we're going to pay attention to that. OK. Um, so speaking of the one of the stairs that is you know being taken out. So for example, that staircase we were just talking about a minute ago, that's that 127A stair, which you can see in these images here. So essentially, these stairs do not meet code. This space is needed for the collections and patron use as a result of, you know, reviews with the MBLC. And right now, this stair is currently being used to access the second floor reading room, which is going to become the director's office, and therefore it's not public in nature. So in a sense, um, this whole area is going to be removed as a result of the change in the plan configuration, as we just talked about a minute ago here. But again, mm -hmm. the, the intent of if there's anything that can be salvaged. And, and, and potentially reused in other parts, we'll consider that. But this is all coming out. Okay. Um, in 128, this is the youth nonfiction area here. Um, uh, and again, this is in the youngest children's room. We're only removing shelving that is not original, um, but everything else will essentially be removed for restoration then put back. So this, in this instance, we are going to be basically putting back in place uh, all the millwork here, um, with the exception of any uh, non-original um, millwork or shelving that wasn't part of the historic fabric. Okay, and then- All right, will those door, will the double door stay when you're looking at 89, you know, there's the doors there, are those gonna remain to go into the new room? I believe, what was those our thoughts remain. on that? Yeah, they're, they're going to remain. Yes. Yeah, they stay. 
right? Okay. So you know, cause I think some of it is that, you know, right now these are rooms, so a lot of them have doors. And so, you know, keeping the doors could be important just to keep that sense as opposed to just opening it up all the, you know. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think certainly to the extent that we're able to do that um, and doesn't impede the, the function and flow the library, we will we will keep it. I think in some places too, we're actually going to fix the doors open, and maybe some places they'll be fixed closed, but they'll be still the original doors. Yes, yeah, they'll still be there. So they just may be in a hold open position. Yeah. Okay. Um, next is room one twenty nine, uh, which is the head of youth services area. Um, essentially, this is the kind of children's director's nook. Um, and it's currently not available to the public. Um, but once we do the library uh, over, this will be part of the children's room and therefore we will capture this back for public use. Um, and again, in this case, we're only, we're, we're keeping the, the trim work and mill work that you can see here, but we're going to be taking out shelving that was not original to the, you know, fabric. So, but the intent is to, is to retain the trim work. And particularly as one sees around things like window openings, you know, areas around the edges and perimeter and the ceiling trim. So that, that is the intent here. It is going to be captured back for public use, which currently does not function that way. Okay, um, excuse me. Uh, this is a stair C, um, which is the other stair that is being um, removed. Again, this is not co-compliant. It's currently not open to the public um, and they can't, be uh, kept because what it does in the renovation, they don't provide the second means of egress to the third floor, which we have to do for code reasons. So this this staircase too is coming out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, um, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, now we're moving up to level two in the building. So, um, this area here, this first room, um, 225, this is the head of information services. Um, essentially, this is uh, the staff kitchen locker room areas. This whole thing is going to be completely reconfigured. Um, so all the millwork is going to be removed except for the projection window that views into the barrel vault room that we talked about earlier in the first floor. Um, and that's essentially the, and that is in this particular instance, this image J. That is the area that is going to be remaining um, as part of the uh, fabric, but everything else is essentially going to be uh, removed because this whole thing is opening up and changing entirely in its configuration from now. And was this renovated uh, in the 1993 renovations? Is this relatively new? I believe so. Josephine, do you have any comments on that? <laughs> I believe this area was renovated in the 90s. Yeah, there that's some what renovations I, to this area. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> next, room 225A. Uh, this is a set head of branch area. Uh, and again, this whole area is um, the millwork is going to be but removed, but reinstalled in place. Um, but there is going to be some areas where we are impacting uh, things because we're removing pieces of um, elements. Uh, so that is going to be coming out. Um, so for example, in view L, uh, this area is being impacted as a result of a small zone 225A because this whole space is changing. So some of this millwork is going to be taken out as a result of that. But things like window trim and all of this particular historic areas, those will, those will be kept. All right, um, 226, this is a staff lounge area. Um, this is being reconfigured for, that means a technology specialist for office use. And it will, relo it will remove um, some original detail as a result of, again, changes in the layout. But uh, again, as a reminder, things like fireplaces, all of that will always, um, this will be kept and remain in place. So 
this 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 area is changing as a result of reconfiguration of this particular office area in this location. Excuse me. But things again like window trim, all of that that will be cut. Sorry, Tony, do you um do you have a floor plan showing that kind of area in the library that proposed floor plan for this? Um I we I don't have this right handy here. And if that's something that we need to provide, we can add that information for you. Right, right now I don't have this yeah. available at the moment. I'm happy to provide that. Okay. Um this next area, room 227, again, this is technology special storage. It's a rather small area here, again, outlined in orange. Um, this does show, however, one of the other rooms, that, excuse me, windows that does view into the barrel vault space from this level. So in this instance, that window will remain. Um, but again, like the lounge space previously, uh, we're gonna lose some of this woodwork because again, this area is being reconfigured. Um, again, this is not uh, spaces that are public in nature and nor will it be in the renovation. This is all back of house staff in private office areas. Um, so that that in some ways is indirectly tied to this, but again, uh, maybe if we share in the future a floor plan that shows the reconfiguration of this, that will make this more evident. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, room 228, this is a corridor. Um, Again, this is tech service area. This will, this will become more public um, because it's going to connect the quiet reading rooms. Um, I do think there's a plan to follow momentary. But anyway, this area here is going to, um, some more work is going to be impacted as a result of opening this up to connect the, the areas in this reading room. Um, some of it will be removed, but however, the vast majority of the millwork will remain in place. Again, I don't know, Josephine, do you want to elaborate a little bit further on this? Or um, uh, looking at um, image 124, which is looking south, um, the the archway the, around the door and um, the casework to the right of that will remain um, on that wall. And then um, looking uh, straight to the west wall, um, we're able to re retain that uh, door frame um, around that opening. Uh, we will be installing a new door there, um, door and side light, but we will, we will be able to retain that um, door trim around that opening. Um, and that's on image 124. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, here. Yeah. yeah. What about that arch doorway in 124? Does that stay? Yes, that yeah. stays. And what sorry, what's happening with the lighting in these rooms? Like right now, they're you know they're um, is it new lighting in in here, or will it be the existing kind of light fixtures? Yeah. No, we have all new lighting. It's all new lighting throughout the entire library. It's also to meet more energy, um, you know, calls relating to lighting fixtures and reduce the demand. So okay. all lighting is going to be replaced. So you won't have the hanging fixtures like there are now. No. No. Thanks. And then sort of in the center of this area, of course, is uh, the continuation in the room 228A. This is the area that is the continuation of the main uh, central staircase in the library. And again, uh, this essentially is going to look the same. Um, all work, all millwork will remain in place. Um, once again, this area is restored, so it will look the way it does now. Excuse me. And then as we come up to the right of that staircase in the adult reading room east in 229A, um, which is shown here again in outlined in orange, um, this, you know, part of the Amherst room, the north wall, uh, this area here is going to be removed to expand into the quiet reading areas. Uh, but the rest of the trim work and details are going to essentially remain as you currently see it now. So I think there's one more plan that maybe we're coming up to it. Okay, yeah. Wait, sorry, Tony, if you went back to the, the stairs, would yep. the doors in that area remain? So the, you know, there's a number of doors in 228A. Um, you mean like these doors here? Right. Like in 118 and, and yeah, 119. 
-hmm. So I think, you know, Josephine, are these being kept in kind on a pulled open or are the doors themselves being removed? Those um, on the south side, um, we had shown removed. I believe there wasn't enough room to keep them on hold opens, if, okay. if I remember correctly. Right. So the frame trim around the door openings remains, but the physical doors themselves are being are being removed. That's right, correct. so both sets of doors will be removed. Yeah, because we have to allow the flow of space in this you know, adult reading area to connect. And, and okay. I think the plan is coming up momentarily. It's mm -hmm. going to show and all of this. Will there be any modifications to the staircase? No. Just you know, other, the risers than, and treads. Than, yeah, other than you know, restoring the walls areas again from earlier discussions, but everything is going to be essentially kept and or put back in place once it's restored. Okay, so new flooring new and floor, ceiling. Yeah. Will the new, ceiling be changed yeah, in height? Yeah, or? new ceiling, new lighting, new flooring. But but the space defining characteristics is going to remain. As you currently see it now, but the flooring is going to change. The height, won't, the height won't change. I don't. Height won't change. No. A portion of the space remains intact. Okay. Um, and then uh, as we we're just touching on a little bit, this is the room to the right of that staircase that we just saw a minute ago, and room two two nine A. Again, um, there is some modifications as a result of this whole area changing here, but the historic defining. Characteristics like the fireplace, you know, the the opening surrounds, of course, the window trim detail, all of that will be kept, um, you know, uh, in place and or put back if it has to be removed as is. And then to the left of the uh, that, of that central stair, which is the adult reading room west, um, and this is 229B, um, there are some storage, there's other things here. These are all going to be opening up because we're going to change this whole thing to make this more, you know, public in nature. So things like, you know, you can see in terms of those particular areas, um, most of this millwork is going to be uh, retained and or, re you know, reinstalled in place um, as a result of this. And of course, things like fireplaces, again, all that is going to be uh, kept. Um, there is, you know, some impact resulting in some reconfiguration of areas here uh, that will impact some of the millwork as a result of removal of some small programs because the layout is changing here. Um, but wherever we're not impacting things like that, the millwork will be kept in place. So I think this next plan kind of summarizes everything I just talked about in all those rooms, 225, 228, 229, so on and so forth, stairs, uh, C2. So here you can see on the left, that's the existing plan. And on the right, the proposed plan. And the, the main takeaway from all of this is that we essentially, we're bringing back um, in some ways or opening up the historic aspects of the of the reading areas here in the center part of the historic library. So all of this space is now, is going to flow a lot better in terms of the whole experience of the patrons, uh, which right now, is, as you know, is quite chopped up in this current configuration here. And um, things that are really defining characteristics like we mentioned, all fireplaces, the central stair area, all the window trim surrounds, all of that is gonna be kept and or restored in place. Uh, and of course, the accommodation of the new staircase here will have in some impact on some of the trim work as a result of the reconfiguration that you particularly see in this area here that results in the change in the layout. Okay, so when you say that, um, you'll be opening up to this, the historic parts, does that mean, I'm not actually familiar with the, what modifications were made in the 90s, is that does that mean this was chopped up in plan during the 90s renovation? Um, I should probably clarify this a little bit. I think when I mentioned opening up, I'm, I'm simply describing the fact that uh, these spaces here um, are going to continue to flow into one another that you currently observe now. Uh, but the resulting this change area here um, is a result of being able to open up more of this space here. So in, in some degree, um, we're we're trying to capture the feel, not only just of the restored part, but also trying to make the spaces themselves flow a lot better in relation to one another. So I, can I just clarify a little bit? So um, uh, in the plan, the existing plan on the left-hand side of your screen, room 229B, 225A, room 228, 
uh, stair C2. None of that is public. That's all the tech services space right now. So um, that's all going to be made public space as you move over to the uh, drawing on the right. Room 229A, that's the Amherst room now. Uh, we're going to be changing that over to be a, a quiet reading room instead of a meeting room. Okay. So 229A currently has that fireplace sort of centered on the east wall and the north wall will now be removed so that it's a different config, just, you know, larger uh, yeah. the configuration slightly changed. Yeah. yeah and you were, you were asking about when the changes were made. I don't know if it was the 90s or the 70s or the 60s, but originally this was all public space. And then during one of the renovations, um, it got turned into the all this tech services stuff. So yeah. Got it. Yeah. And again, to reinforce what Sharon says, the real takeaway from all of this is, um, is, is giving back to the public use of spaces which currently do not function that way. So in the, in the result of opening up things to the public, um, things that we are holding onto for the historic fabric absolutely will remain. And in this instance where we are obviously impacting things like they mentioned, you just mentioned about this wall being taken out because it, in some ways this whole room is now expanding quite a bit bigger. Um, yes, it's true that the disposition of the fireplace in the space changes in proportion, but uh, all the trim work around it remains intact. And again, I know Nate's question is going to be, when you do this, um, the defining characteristics of millwork as you extend this forward, how does that all work? So we will be you know, carefully working through that. Um, so we try to make this look as seamless as possible once this is restored and redone. Can we just scroll up quickly just to see that um, image of Amherst Rim once, just once more? This okay, one. There it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay. Um, and then the next space, um, room 230, um, this is essentially going to become part of the administrative suite. Um, so in this instance, again, most, most of the millwork is going to be essentially retained in place. Um, there's a small percentage that will you know, be removed. Again, some of it is bookshelf related, but what you see like fireplaces and other instances, uh, window openings, door openings, all of that is going to be kept. And this is part of the administrative suite area. Can I ask about the furniture? Um, there's some pretty nice furniture in that space. Uh, is furniture generally where it exists now going to stay in those spaces? going forward? Uh, so we, um, let me pipe in. So we'll, um, all of the furniture and art and uh, carpets and, and things like that, um, statues, uh, everything that's in our fine arts collection will absolutely stay. Um, one of the things that sticks out is is the chandelier that's now in special collections. That's going to be put back into the Goodwin room where it was originally. Um, I I cannot speak to the original locations of things, but everything will definitely be kept and and <clears throat> and released for people to be able to see, as opposed to hidden away in storage. Does that include the two? Arts and Crafts umbrella stands that are mentioned in the Historic Structures Report? I cannot speak are, are to they, that. I don't know. Are they, um, are they, are they positioned somewhere? Um, they were mentioned in the Historic Structures Report. There were photographs of them. There are two of them. They're original to the 1928 building. Um, are, are they featured somewhere? Are they going into some kind of protected situation because they're part of the original furniture of the, of the library? I'm, I'm just curious. Um, yeah, so as long as they're in our fine arts collection, then yes. So are you proposing a kind of inventory or is there one that already exists? Yeah, there is an inventory that already exists. I don't I don't have it in front of me. Okay. <clears throat> well, 
brings up a good question too. And the interiors, when it actually comes to laying out all the furniture, you know, that's another opportunity to to you know work with things that are important from the, the historic perspective and decide where they should be in the in the building, which mm -hmm. would be a step you know, to really, to really get into and should have probably another committee that will be involved, I assume, in the interiors. Yeah, I, I think, I think, um, I'm sorry if this is kind of going off topic and people have been weighing in with questions and I've been trying to be a good person and not weigh in because <laughs> uh, we're on level two and I'm sure that there are two more levels to go. Um, but the interiors of the windows um, especially the windows in the dormers where the decorative tracery is and the windows in the children's room area that have this rather sort of decorative, almost curtain-like um, feature on them on the inside. I I'm, I'm curious to just, I guess, have your reassurance that, the, that they are, you know, nothing is going to change um, about those kinds of things that are, yes, part of the exterior, but but by virtue of being windows, important on the interior as well. Um, you don't have to answer the question now, but I'm, I'm just trying to get a feel for some of the textures and um, materials, um, especially when I'm when I'm hearing that um, <clears throat> things are coming out and then going back and. Um, that's, that seems that, I mean, the asbestos abatement, I'm, I'm sort of sitting here thinking, my God, this is a huge element of yeah. this project. And yes. it's giving me, <laughs> it's giving me <laughs> pause, um, just, you know, for all of the things that you're, you are going to have to be dealing with. And, um, uh, I, I'm just thinking of, of how we're going to feel about those sort of quintessential domestic spaces that Madeleine referred to in her opening uh, remarks. And I think some of that comes really from furniture and from the artwork you mentioned, um, which is obviously really important, but also these bookshelves that you're removing. I think I think some people are going to wonder about that. I, I think it's okay. <laughs> But I think there may be people, you might get some pushback about some of the book book shelving that is coming out rather than, because um, it might it might suggest that you're taking out, you know, um, original fabric when you're, when you're not. It's just, um, I just thought I'd throw that, that in. No, thank you for your, right. your feedback. I really appreciate the very thoughtful comments. And you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, that is, as Ellen mentioned at the outset, uh, this, is a, is, this is a very careful, but it is a big undertaking. And what we've worked on historic uh, buildings in the past, we're well aware of, as we said, um, our experience in dealing with these kind of challenges. And, and it has to be handled carefully um, in order to not only address the historic defining characters, but of course, to make your building, you know, safe uh, environmentally. Um, we can't have asbestos, we can't have lead paint, and we can't have right. anything like that. So we have to do these things in order to make sure that your building is safe for the public and, and everyone who uses it. So it, it is a fine dance and we we are um we've done this a number of cases but every single situation is different and of course your point is very well taken we we need to pay attention to a lot of this the the one question about the staircase that's the, the one that's non-compliant is it c s c three is that the one that's it was um it was it was c let's go back It's uh, 127A. Yeah, stair. 127A is one of them. And the other one was their STC1. Yeah, I think we pointed them out on yeah, here, for example, this one. STC, okay. yeah, one is removed that's not yeah. co-compliant. Yeah, the two that we pointed out that we removed, they're not co-compliant. And or they don't get to the levels we need them to get to, in okay. addition to the plan changes that we have to make in order to you know, make the library function and, and work. Got Again. it. So do those piece the, those elements do they get put in if the town agrees or wants to can those be added to the sistering kind of stash hmm. <laughs> or, or is this some some other category um of of element hmm. of furnishing 
this is pretty pretty hard when you have to tear out the whole thing. I mean, I suppose if, if people wanted to save, you know, the the railings and balusters for something, yes. I I don't see where we would use the stair pieces in the in the sistering idea particularly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, be specific to this location. So. Right. I mean, I think things like millwork, paneling, yeah. you know, trim, that that kind of thing can be re-salvaged. But to Jim's point, stairs are very specific in their design. And other than balustrades and railings, and unless there was something that was being placed, um, even if you tried to hold on to it, you know, the whole the whole code issue on stairs, steepness mm -hmm. and rise and treads, they don't comply. So even if you tried right. to reuse it, they wouldn't work with modern day right. stair requirements, right? Because right? it's too steep, and these are too steep, as you probably are well aware, walking up and down those stairs. Um, I'm not. I'm not so trying to sort of press your buttons, Tony. I'm just. Oh I'm no, just no, it's a very good question. Trying right. to get an explanation yeah. because I'm trying to, as it were, flesh out what, what the what the reasoning is behind what's happening. That's all. Yeah. Thank you very much for your very thoughtful questions. Um, okay, let me come back to where we last left off. So I think we went through, yeah, we just ended here with that area, and then we were wrapping up here with the right. level 230. And then the, again, here um, in 230A, um, uh, and this is this just since we we're just talking about the staircase a minute ago. So that's the upper part of that stair. Um, so that, again, this is all coming out because, again, for all the reasons we just said, the stair is being removed because it's not code compliant. And the, and the space layout is changing. As so that is that wall being removed between the stairs and one two thirty? I think I think that's the case, but again, I don't have. Sorry, apologies. I don't have the floor plan that shows the change, uh, okay. but I believe that's correct. Um, the wall between two thirty and two thirty A that's being removed. Yeah, this this wall. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because this plan again is opening up. Um. Okay, and. Sorry, Tony, can you, can you go back to just images of 230? The... 230. Yeah, the, the, the... This one? Yeah. Yeah. And so that door between 230 and 230A, that door frame, is that being repurposed somewhere else with that sort of shouldered architrave? That It's kind of a unique, the doorways in here. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the problems with the existing doors, they don't, they're not wide enough to meet code, right? They're not three feet. That's, that's a lot of them are around two, six. Ah, uh, see, okay. That's, that's a double, the, that's a double door though. Yeah, but each leaf has to be either, you, you have, one of the two leaves have to be three feet. Three feet, right. Can be, yeah. And, and either door with currently does right. that. Yeah. Right, and that's and that's not unusual. We run into that all the time in historic yeah. buildings. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, I guess my question, yeah. sorry, my question here is: on the east wall, you say that most of the stuff will be retained or removed and reinstalled. So that makes me think that the wall between two thirty and two thirty A would be would remain. Is that am I reading that chart wrong on the top of this slide? So yeah, sixty percent will be retained. It says. Well, then 30% uh, would be removed and reinstalled. So that's, you know, 90% would be. Uh, I, think the, I think the clarification, I get what you're getting at, Nate, is it is being removed and reinstalled, but it may not be in the same place because we're clearly going to be shifting um, this configuration. And again, without having the benefit of the other plan showing what we're doing, it's hard to explain this. So again, uh, but necessary, we can clarify this with showing what's being proposed. Oh, so there's a difference between remained or so. Can, oh, sorry, can you scroll up again? So it says 60% millwork to be retained in place or to be remain. I can't read that. And then 10% to be removed permanently and 30% to be removed and then reinstalled in same place. In same place or play. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we need to clarify this for you. Well, I mean, I think on the other slide, it is, on the, the other slide, it makes sense. Going. Right. So the whole wall not, is not going is what that note is saying. Only a portion of it is. And remember, we had that plan yes. that we were showing exactly where things were, and we were asked not to do that because it was too confusing, and we understood that. 
So we peeled it back to try, try to be as Sharon told us, take our architect's hats off and try to be clear on, on the concept, right? Is that in this room, on particular on that east wall, 30% of it um, will be removed and re reinstalled. I so that's, also, so it, go ahead, Justin. I'm sorry. I think also where some of the confusion is, I think we talked potentially about taking what is there and doing what we are doing down below on the first floor is if, if we could potentially move it to the wall that's staying to the right. Yeah, to here. Um, and I think we, we might have talked about that in passing, and I don't know if that was finalized because we were going to check dimensions on that. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's where the hiccup is on this one. Yeah, so okay. this, this one we're still working. In other words, we're working through this space. Um, and again, for clarity's sake, we can come back to and expound upon this particular room. Okay. Just so you all understand, and we're on the same page. Okay. Um, I think that we're almost done with level two. Yeah. This so that so again the level two this this whole staircase C, um, is again part of the thing. This is the um, one that is non-compliant, and so this this and it's closed to the public and then up to code. So this this staircase is being removed, um, and again it's resulting in the reconfiguration of this particular area. As, as well. Okay. Um, now level three. Um, so this this is the essentially level three hundred one. This is the third floor landing um, again of that center staircase, uh, the main staircase in the middle. Um, but there is some reconfiguration uh, that results from accommodating accessibility. Um, and some of the millwork in this particular area will be um, removed. Um, and some of the areas that are currently storage spaces are not publicly accessible. But again, Josephine, do you want to elaborate on this particular area a little bit further? I was muted. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it, it's something that we can help explain. What's going on here? Yeah, we do. We we don't have the proposed here, right? We don't. And again, that's probably something we should we should yeah. show. Yeah, it, it's a, kind of a tricky configuration. Um, looking at it left to right would be a little bit easier, I think. But we are trying to keep as much as we can here. Um, we are really reconfiguring this, and now it's going to become public space. And so, um, with that reconfiguration, um, we will have to remove um some. Uh, chair rails and baseboard and things of that nature. Um, but we are retaining as much as we can here um, as well. But I think this is one of the cases where the proposed layout would be really helpful. Yeah, so we, we can add a proposed layout just to show you what's really going on here as, as a result of changing this area. And I think that'll make it clearer. Yeah, that'll be helpful. Thank you. So we'll, we'll, yeah. move, on. we'll move on from this. Um, this Goodwin, this is now the Goodwin room, 302. Um, this area is essentially going to be fully restored and it will retain all of the detail um, and including the fact that we will be restoring, you know, the chandelier um, that was originally um, believed from research that this was actually hung in this space before it was shifted to another part of your library. So the intent here is to bring that uh, chandelier back into this room and, and replace, you know, these these current existing fixtures as well as new new lighting. So that actually is going to make it feel in some ways more of the original historic fabric as it once was. And it currently, um, you know, this area right now is essentially not really that open to the public, um, but as a result of the change in the renovation, that too will change. So we'll have the more opportunity for the public as well to enjoy this space, which currently isn't really that accessible. And so flooring um, doors and the current windows will all Remain. Um, I don't know, Josephine, you want to elaborate on some of the things? I, I can't speak of the flooring. Uh, certainly the millwork and all of that trim work will remain, fireplace, et cetera. Um, I'm not sure. Is the flooring is the flooring original to this area? Or... Yeah, I think we thought it wasn't original, but we could double check. OK, yeah, so we'll confirm that. But if we had to replace it, I think the I, the idea of the, you know, the wood flooring is, you know, it's a very nice um, aspect of this space. So we we certainly will keep it if we can. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then 
room 303. This is, uh, again, um, sort of staff lounge area right now. A lot of these things are, as you can see, are storage spaces. Um, and some of it's being used as friend's office. So this will transform into a staff lounge area. Um, and there will be some instances where we are going to be opening up uh, this particular area for the staff. And so as a result of that, some mill work will be, will be removed because we have to open up um, these spaces to one another as a result of making them staff areas. But again, everything related to window uh, trim, uh, anything of that nature, that will remain uh, that, you know, as is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think we're getting close. Um, room 303D. Again, this is currently um, going to become the staff locker area. So this whole kind of space here is going to change in terms of its function, but there is very minimal millwork already uh, in this. So, uh, for example, areas on the north wall, uh, that millwork is going to, you know, whatever small amount there is there, as you can see right here, this is going to be removed because um, there is going to be uh, the change of this for locker areas. Um, but things like window trim, all of that, that will remain the historic defining characteristics. And then the last thing I'm just going to simply show, th these were earlier renderings, but just to give you a sense of like when we're talking about restoration. So in the barrel vault room, um, you know, once we open up this space and of course remove all those bookcases that are currently stuffing up the room, you know, we're going to be able to bring this whole area back, uh, I think, to, you know, a really special feel. Um, and you have to take a little bit artistic license on the rendering. So if you're asking, is that the exact light fixture? No, it's not. <laughs> uh, but but the intent you can see here is that once you bring back um, the opening up the space and restore the plaster work and the trim work and then the opening work, all of this uh, will be refurbished and basically bring, kind of bring it back you know, in a way to its former grandeur. Um, and even things such as the um, Amherst room, you can see here, once you begin to unstuff the spaces and remove things like storage areas and other things. So we will be bringing back, uh, I think, you know, a very sensitive nature of restoration, um, reuse, and if cases where we have to add trim work, it will all be done in a way that makes it look seamless. So this, th these are just representative of some of the sense of how we're thinking about these historic spaces that we we really want to bring them back to life uh, and make them especially more available, which many of them are, for public and patron enjoyment and use. I think that that oh, and then the last slide here, there was some question relating to what um, percentage. I'm sorry, it's a little fuzzy right now. What percentage of the spaces are public in nature? Um, so you can see here um, in the in the new design, um, everything that's um, oriented in yellow tone, all of that is now public in nature. So some spaces that we talked about before that weren't available to the public, uh, particularly in areas like office areas and upper levels, we are bringing them back and making them now available for the public use. So we're, we're, we're greatly enhancing the ability for the patrons to use more of the library. And then the areas which are essentially not colored in yellow, these are backup, backup house private or staff areas, which are dedicated for the folks who actually work in the library. Um, but you can see here, this is a very large percentage of the library is being now uh, brought back or made use for public um, use. And I think, and I'm not gonna get into this detail, but this 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 Excel spreadsheet, again, it's in the summation here. This is everything I just talked about, but really spelling out, you know, everything in detail about each room, you know, the estimated percentage, whether it's restored, replaced, uh, repositioned, or relocated, right. or if it's being removed. So that and summarizes on, everything today. And this is on top of each of the sheets. So each that's what after. we just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just put Wait, it one, can I, one can I, place. Can you go back to room 158 and 159 on the third floor for a minute, just to- 158. Sorry, they um, yeah, yeah, realized yeah. a little bit. So which rooms did you want to see? I'm sorry. I think it's the no, slide down from that. Going this way? Yes. Yep. These rooms. Yeah. So this is where the staff lounge will be. Correct. Yeah. Right now it's just it's just a store. These are these are just these are storage areas as you can see right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>
So say on like 303A in image 155, there's that door in the wall. Is that remaining or not? Yes, you, the, the door will remain. The door will remain. That's like that's well, that's part of the 50% of the woodwork millwork we retain. Yeah. All right, thanks. Okay, um, well, there's a lot to absorb um, here. So I guess just comments, questions in general. Yeah, I think so. We have a, um, we have the floor plans of, of, the, of the proposed that are available for the level one we've seen. And then I think Level two, we were kind of wondering what is happening with um, 225A and 226, right? Yeah. Just sort of that arrangement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe we... Yeah. yeah so I don't know if we could describe but... that or, or if we should just wait for to be able to see the floor plan once you can um, share it. I mean, unless, uh, unless Josephine, you want to pull up plans, uh, I don't have access to that. Otherwise, if we can't share it easily, we'll have to <laughs> have to add some information for your understanding of it. I can pull up and I have the rough model open. We can just go okay. through. Okay, you want to, I'll stop sharing. Okay with share. that. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. And Tony, I did see you had your hand raised, so just, you know, keep, you know, if not now, just remember what you wanted to say and we can, we'll get to you. Great. Nice screen. So we were looking at the second floor, right? And that was some of these questions that you had for right. us. So this is proposed. Yeah, so I think we did show this area, but I think you had some questions, I believe, in the yeah. spaces to the right and to the left of this main area. Is that correct? I'm just kind of trying to remember what which areas we didn't have plans. One was, one was uh, the two twenty one of the two twenty five. So right, you know, where the adult reading room on the north is happening with the head of you know the, that area. Uh, in the stairs there. Right, so the Amherst room, that's being changed there. I think, did we see, yeah. Okay. We saw that. Yeah, we saw that and then yeah. um, the adult reading room west. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we showed that. Yep. Okay. Let's see, did we, where are the other? I think, I think the third floor had a number of a number of spaces that like stab stuff that we were talking about that we didn't show the proposed. I don't know, Justin. You want to move up to the third floor for a second, just. Justin, I think it's by that's that old the stair that we're moving those rooms right around there. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. So that's what you were just asking about before, Nate. Right? Mm -hmm. Those one fifty six room, right. fifty seven, fifty eight. Mm -hmm. Now you can see those rooms were all chopped up. Mm -hmm. um, so this whole area there, you can see in the staff break room is opening up um, to be one continuous space for staff. So that door he was just asking about, I don't. Yeah, that won't there. that won't remain in its current it's location because that space is closed. Yeah, this door is pinned that closed. door is the one that you were asking about, right, Nate? Well, I was asking the one like between the rooms, say that was visible. So it would have been mm -hmm. like where you know the section line is now or something, oh. but mm -hmm. yeah. those would be removed between the rooms. That's correct. correct. Yes. So that will be just removed or reused somewhere else. It will be removed. It will be removed. Okay. And again, as, as you as you know right now, currently all that space is just one big series of storage rooms, um, and we're putting this all back for staff use on this level, with the exception of the you know Goodwin room. And I'm just going to point out here, um, 
since we're on this floor plan, um, I, I know that it's it's hard to talk about this without referring to what we were just looking at a minute ago. Um, but the spare area 301, um, this is what Justin was referring to. We have to make some modifications here to bring co-compliance to the top end of the stair. And we're introducing, you know, a new elevator at the back, which has to has to connect to get to this level. In addition to that staircase, uh, SD3, C3, you know, in order to make two means of egress from this level, which currently doesn't work. So we're bringing up, you know, a new elevator access um, and uh, this new stair. And, and you can see it does impact that one corner of the library portion in order to accommodate this. So right, hey, that was hard to understand that in the plans. I wanted to point out that this new elevator, the, it's strategically placed to access every floor in the elevator, Correct. every floor in the, building, in the building, which the one that was there did not. Right. Plus being co-compliant on size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As well, yeah. Yeah. So that, so I think that's probably a number of things that you guys were asking about, particularly on this level, which we didn't <laughs> show you, but this is what's changing here. And can you go to level two on with the and these plans just so we could see again where the the existing stairs are being removed and what it is going to so um right it's in that area right so that corridor is going to be uh 228 will be kind of square in plan now it's sort of a, a longer corridor. I'm just looking at the PNF um, plans in comparison. Um, and then head of programming 224A, that's a new room, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yes. So that um, that kind of, that wall on the, is it the, the um, trying to get my, Cardinal okay. directions, correct. Uh, Plan north is up. <laughs> north. On the north wall of the adult reading room, West 229B, that, that wall is essentially new. It's new. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. And if commissioners want to follow along, I'm mean, looking at the PNF on page 20. You can see the plan of the existing, kind of compare it. Um, okay. I guess we can move on to more questions. Um, Antonia, do you want to sure. ask um, a question? I guess I had a question about earlier um, for room 103 that's like pushing the existing panel back i was wondering if that doorway will be functional or if it's like flushed on the wall like to the stairway i guess it's going to be inserted back to the presentation yeah do you still have that open to me? I don't know if you want to. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to reshare the? I I'm not sure if that's the if we if that's the best way or if we just, you just want to use this plan. I think it's the other plan, to, Josephine. Right, the existing. Which yeah, I don't the have PNF. Here, yeah. Right? I don't have the same. Tony, can you share again? Do you, do you want me to? Sh well, no, actually, he should probably share. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I can. You're talking about room 103. Yeah. All right. Let me see if I can. Retrace that stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, bear with me one second. Of course, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you while you're going. No, I think it's good that we go back to the presentation and just review some of the material. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so. Or maybe it wasn't 103. Um, wait. Was it this area? Uh, it was. 103A maybe? Yeah, so 102. 102. I know. Uh, go down. Maybe it's 103. Sorry. And they, uh, I wrote 102, but I could not. Notice. Um, 103A or 103A? Yeah, 103A. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I was wondering if that, like, the panel on D, when that's, I guess, moved back um, to open up the space, whether that doorway will be functional or um, whether it's going to be flushed on, like, will it be functional, I guess, to get into that new stairway or how? Right. Will it just be kind of a blind archway or? It won't be functional. Okay. Um, and then another question I had, which is not, which I guess is part of the exterior, but kind of relates to the interior is I know that last um, meeting, like the Whipple window was a big concern. I was wondering if like, you know, where that will be placed in the interior yet, or if that's going to be in the um, ex expansion. Um, we had a couple of thoughts. We currently are looking at the first floor reading room as a possible location. Okay. On the south wall. The You're talking room. about this one, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. In one of these well, areas here, the Whipple, excuse me, window. Um, hey, guys, we're, we're exploring this. Yeah. Thank you. Into the space. Yeah. Those were my questions. Yeah, that's, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, that's being that's still being studied. But it will definitely be incorporated into the design somewhere. Yes. And perhaps not as a window, but as an architectural artifact. Could be that too. Yeah, that's it's possible. That's what we're trying to test through right now. Okay. Thank you. We haven't talked about the basement or what you're calling the garden floor. At all, I'm I'm curious to know about the Civil War tablets and what that space looks like inside. Um, what kind of flooring there is? Is there any need for reinforcements because they're so heavy? Um, what kind of lighting there is in that space? Um, I Hedy, I don't think we're prepared to talk about that today. Okay. I, I I didn't think that was on our agenda because um, <clears throat> that's in the new built new section got it got it okay fair and, enough um and i think the existing basement of the original library is pretty much storage and unfinished in many locations really okay. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah it's really back of house or mechanical yeah. areas yeah okay. yeah it's not for public access at all have any of you seen the foundation stone from the amherst hotel building that was brought across the street in 1928. Anybody see that? No. Some huge piece of, no. some huge piece of stone that was... Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so the, it's cool because, you know, that was a building where the library was located until built burnt down. And, and, the, and the Jones people said, we need to bring this foundation stone across to the 1928 building. So... Ooh. So this, our building, our historic building, has the foundation stone from the Amherst Hotel, which was where the library was, and then it has the Whipple window as well. So it's like all along, you know, this is a an, a, an institution that has sort of valued literally pulling bits of its past into its present. Um, kind of interesting. No, oh, that's, 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 that's great. It's very interesting. <laughs> but I just wondered if it's, visible in that in that area and I um now I've, now I'm now my interest is peaked <laughs> I'm sorry mine, to mine too Hedy. we'll find out we'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll find out that. Yeah. 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 yeah it made us curious yeah. if anybody <laughs> knows it may be George yes um, George. yeah yeah yes. okay. great any other questions no um let's see uh, let me look at my notes here um in one uh room 129 can we just look there sure here oh no um maybe let's see i think uh Maybe that's photograph 129. <laughs> Move on. 
This is the um, admin suite. This one. Yeah, here. Mm -hmm. um, so the fireplace, you said that will be retained. And what about the sort of other elements of the fireplace, the sort of hearthstone and just the the, the rest of the, the surrounds, the kind of stonework here? Or will yeah, that I I, also that, be? Yeah, I believe that will be retained. OK. Yeah. Um, and if the flooring is changed, you kind of intend to have something similar to this. I think, yes, if we're able to, you know, uh, reuse or in this case, this is wood floor in this area. Um, if I okay. could just comment about the flooring. So a lot of the library ends will have carpeting like it does now. And that's for many reasons. One is noise. Um, but where we can, uh, like the trustees room on the top floor. Yeah, the good room. Yeah, yeah the um, good room. That we're trying to keep intact. So, <clears throat> and then for instance, the main stair coming in, that has a, a carpet runner on it. We'll do the same kind of treatment. Mm -hmm. um, but with the library, we have to balance the noise issues with the, the practical issues of a wood floor and maintenance and all that stuff. So a lot of the library gets carpet. Right. Just certainly, I'm. I think I'm just kind of uh, thinking about the how that works with the existing um, details and kind of whether you know how how it kind of matches or complements the it, existing similar, interior. I think we install it similar to this. Um, and there's a whole um, <clears throat> series of uh, interior uh, meetings we've had, selecting carpet colors and that kind of thing. But right, it's not area, that it has to match kind of what's there right no. now, but just <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit more. Right just to <laughs> sort of yeah, not clashes it'll, or it'll be installed know. in a similar manner, right? So you're you're going to be seeing essentially the same amount of wood trim and things you're seeing now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Could you go back, Tony, to that view again of that fireplace? I think like, a question came up about, you know, book bookshelves and something we need to look at as we go along. But, you know, in some cases, it appears that the bookshelves might be original and were built yeah. in. This may be one of them. Yeah. But then if you look to the left, you see bookshelves that like are these. scattered all over the yeah, place. Yeah, these are scattered, yeah. So, you know, there will be an intent to, if, you know, where if it's an integral part of, say, a mantle in a fireplace, we, we would try to keep that. But yeah, you know, to your point, Jim, I mean, like here you can see that there's a lot of trim work around this particular set of bookcases, which is matching the mantle place of the fireplace versus these. These look like definitely after thoughts or okay. bookcases that were not so integral. Um, yeah. And so I think we'll we'll be paying attention to things like if it really is integral to the defining characteristic, then yes, we'll pay attention to that versus yeah. some like these, which are not. Pat, do you have a question? I do. Um, I, I, I had the same question about this fireplace because I'm familiar with the room. And I think that this, the, that the bookcases are integral to the original, mm -hmm. but I'm also thinking that there's a certain Aside from a historical aspect, there's a certain aesthetic in mm -hmm. a room like this to keep the wood floor. Mm -hmm. it, it, carpeting wouldn't work, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so I, I appreciate the need for quietude in a library. But I think, you know, this is a distinct room that has a history. Mm -hmm. And there's a painting in there um, of the uh, founder of uh, the donator of much of the art and his and his paint a painting of a portrait of him um and and uh, the philanthropy that um gave the art to the Jones Museum the Jones Library and and created the Burnett Gallery which I'm on the member on that committee so I'm very concerned about the new plans to house that but but I, I'm very familiar with this room because we, as a Burnett Gallery Committee, met here and and um, 
you know, it's a room that honored the person who donated art to the to the Jones Library that that one of the pieces was sold that allowed it to move forward at one point in time. So um, history history is in the architecture and it's in the artifacts, but it's in the history of the, of the library itself. So I just had to speak to that because I think this room, if it could be kept um, with the original uh, fireplace and the surrounding bookcases and a wood floor and, um, you know, in memory and in honor mm -hmm. of a person who was instrumental in the history of the Jones Library. Mm -hmm. Now, thank you very much for those very thoughtful words. I uh, absolutely appreciate your sensitivity to that, Pat, and I think that is that speaks volumes, no pun intended, to the his important fabric that that in particular is germane to the historic area of this library. So that, that that's very much appreciated. Your feedback and comments on that. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Um, I did see in, in one of the renderings that um, there was recessed lighting in the ceilings. Um, is that something you intend to have throughout the building or, I mean, with minor exception or in select what locations? will that be? Yeah, it depends on the area. Yeah. Okay. There's a whole, there's a whole, there's a whole design revolving around lighting um, that is very <laughs> detailed. Um, that is throughout the whole library and one of the key things about that is not only you know what's what's diff what is appropriate to spaces like this but also how does it integrate across the entire library um, right. and of course meet current energy code requirements so the whole lighting issue is its own thing in of itself okay yeah i think that there are those sort of more domestic um spaces Mm -hmm. in the library currently mm -hmm. i mean not every room has it but you know including the admin suite that you know do have a certain f feeling to them that that is significant and maybe the lighting would impact that as well as you know what was pat what pat was talking about too with retaining certain details we agree okay so one, so, one point yeah. i'd like to make a lot of the lighting was changed in the renovation uh in the 90s so it, there's there's very few lights that we have found that original. The ones that, like the chandelier, there's a couple out front that we're absolutely keeping. Um, but there's not a lot, sadly. Yeah. Right. Right. I would just, I think I would expect maybe a, sort of a warmer tone to some mm -hmm. of those more domestic spaces. I agree. Is is it possible to look at other buildings by Putnam and Fox to see what was there in other buildings of the same time period? In terms yeah. of right. lighting, in, in lighting. terms of the only one we worked on it was the one in Cambridge. They did the uh, police headquarters, which in the old days, and it was a Masonic hall, but we really found almost not, not clues. You know, so much of it was a low level lighting on tables mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. floor lamps yep. and that sort of thing. So I, 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 I don't, we can do a little more research, but we don't have any personal clues. I don't think yet to that. Okay. Well, I think at this point, um, let's see, have we heard from all the commissioners? Um, Nate, do you think we should open it up to public comment or what's the next step here? Um, I mean, yeah, it's up to, as acting as chair, Madeline, I mean, it's not a public hearing. This was a public meeting to review this. Um, right. I guess, um, you know, it's, if there's any other questions uh, for the commission, um, you know, I, I think that I was gonna mention that the Mass Historic had sent a letter stating that, you know, they had no, you know, um, review the um, it's probably the product notification form that was sent in at the end of October, and they had you know some comments about removal of the stairwell and you know um, changes to you know the interior, saying that much of it had been retained and now it's changing. And so I wasn't sure if there's a response to that um, tonight. I mean, I think it was just it was like kind of an informational letter that they sent. 
in late November. I think we were going to just correct me if I'm wrong. We we're going to provide a written response. Mm -hmm. Josephine. Yeah, I mean, we started that package with responses. Right. right. And that's we'll be responding. We'll be sending that along to you. We our focus was to get this together for you guys. Uh, what we went over tonight, which was a was an undertaking. So we do have that other response to MHC started. And actually we've sent a draft to our other consultants, Epsilon. I think Epsilon is reviewing this uh, package as well. And yes. Yeah. We would put this, send this back, I hope to MHC if everyone agrees, helpfully clarifying some of yeah. their comments, which we didn't understand. But <laughs> Yeah, so I think like the mass historic note of the removal of the two staircases, not the main stairwell, but the two, you know, side yeah. stairs um, and, you know, removal of some of changes to interior rooms. And so, you know, the commission tonight, you know, it's where, you know, Madeline's been asking and mentioned is, you know, are the changes enough to um, really change the character and the defining characteristics? So, you know, we did go room by room and then we've had some general discussion about it. And so, you know, what... Um, you know, if, as part of the agenda was a vote. So, you know, the commission would, you know, take a position on, is this keeping the character of the library and would we support um, an application for tax credits? And so previously the chair had signed a letter saying that, you know, you know, that this was, um, you know, everything was good, right? We hadn't really seen, seen the interior. And I think, you know, we had requested this meeting um, in part because of the letter from Mass Historic and just because we're getting to the point where, we needed to know what is really happening on the interior of the building. And so, you know, if commissioners are feeling comfortable with that, you know, I think it'd be good to know. And, you know, do you, do you need more information? So I think, um, you know, we walked through a lot. I don't know if there's any missing pieces for the, for commissioners, or if you feel like you understand it enough, I guess I just want to make sure that everyone is, you know, feels good about what we've seen. Um, How's everyone Nate, feeling? <laughs> I, I, for one, feel that the goal is to maintain as much of the historical character of the interior as the exterior. And um, I think, for me, the questions were answered. I'm very familiar with the library. And I think the only changes to the historical um, aspects are ones that need to happen to to meet code and, and and accommodate a modern library but keeping all of the um woodwork intact as much as possible is is evident um and i think a mighty task actually Right, I, I I do really appreciate the effort to relocate these certain walls to uh, retain the millwork and um, yeah, it's, it's a great effort. Um, there's some spaces are sort of the floor plan is changing and so that will be a change um, to the kind of sequence of spaces, maybe the um, the layout, which is notable, um, but I think I, I yeah, I, I do feel quite confident that the those sort of character defining features will be retained. Um, in this in this approach, Hedy, do you want to say anything? I think I'm. I think I've said everything I wanted to say, based on the, on the report, and and. I look forward to, you know, the next phase. Antonia, do you have any comment? Yeah, I think um, it was really um, well laid out, and I understand like I guess the changes that need to happen for code and accessibility reasons. Um, that the library can be used by more people. Um, and 
yeah, I think the questions I had were answered uh, and appreciate the work that was done for this. Yeah, thank you so much for putting together this presentation. It really um, did show us, I think quite thoroughly what, what to expect. And I, I think there were some questions where it's a question of, you still don't know, but you know, like the Whipple window um, and right, certain certain things, um, certain doorways, et cetera. But I, um, I feel quite confident that we could support the application. Should we have a vote, Nate? Yeah, no, I think it would be good to have a, a motion and a vote on that. And then, um, you know, if we want, I can communicate. Um, yeah, I think let's have that. And then if we want to see any updates or anything, um, you know, after the discussion, I feel like I had some notes in terms of certain things. We could always have another presentation as time goes on with this project. Um, completely different um, topic, but, you know, the preservation restriction, we reviewed it. And then the library went through the planning board site plan review and there were some minor changes made. And so, you know, with everyone here, you know, my thought would be to have another meeting um, with the commission to review, you know, there's some, um, you know, minor changes, say to the front entry or little things that I was going to have just previewed again, just so the commission sees it. Um, and so, you know, if that's in a month or two, you know, we could have any follow up with interior if there's updates. And so it would just be kind of a wrap up meeting um, at that this level of design. Um, but you know, that's getting ahead of ourselves. I just wanted to let everyone know that, that, you know, we probably have one more meeting just to get, you know, to see anything um, that's been updated. But for tonight, it would be, you know, right, really just a motion and a vote. If people are, are ready. Nate, will you be sending your comments over? Because we may be able to, rather than take people's time for another meeting, we may be able to communicate anything you want to know in a in an email or a photographs or something just like an addendum yeah because yes that yeah. you've got I, uh with the preservation restriction my only thought is that any you know any changes need to get reviewed by the commission and so i don't i don't you know it's not something i would want to have done administratively okay uh, so you know even i don't you know i guess it's your time as well but you know it could be something that's pretty brief if we outline it like okay here's what mm -hmm. we saw um in november and december and here's what the changes are if it's you know um you know like i think it's only it's maybe like three or four things but just you know if it's like some exterior lighting if it's the entry if it's the back plaza just these are the changes from the, those plan sets to the new one and okay. it can be a pretty quick review just so that we can have then a record of it um okay understood so nate will you guide us in the motion uh, yeah, I mean, I think Pat, you said it, or, had, or Madeline has said it, you know, to the point that the, you know, character defining features are intact and that, um, you know, something that the, you know, overall uh, character of the library remains and efforts are made to preserve it. I mean, it, it can be, there's not really a, to me, necessary, you know, that you would support the letter, the application for tax credits and letter to the state. And so, I don't have anything specific as something along those lines. So I, I would be willing to propose that wording um, because that's our intent this evening, now that we're satisfied. Go ahead, Pat. Well, I I I I, <laughs> I think Nate kind of you know laid it out for us. I'm not sure that I can can repeat that. I guess, do we support the, uh, the application to, or the we, letter, or the letter to, we, to support, we support the application? We support the letter to the application um, because of the fact that, that um, the history and the architectural history of the, of the library is going to be maintained as best as possible. I second that. A third. <laughs> we just have to agree. We just have to vote, right? That yeah. We, right? There's any more, I don't know if there's any more discussion, but then we can call the, have the vote. Right. Okay. Good. Let's see. Um, Hetty, do you support that? Yes. 
Antonia. Yes. Yeah. And I do as well. Um, and Robin is recused. So I think we missed four that. of us. I, I and I, I oh. made the motion, but but I I, I do support it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Good. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Thank, Thank you for your work. Thank you for your time. Appreciate Thank you. Very much. Thank you. And can you send us the presentation from tonight? So we, we sure. can it. it's online. That way we can have the information available. Yes, we can take care of that. Yeah, thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening, Thank everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. I think uh, I'm back. I think uh, <laughs> Mel <Madeline> left. <laughs> she turned into a pumpkin. Yeah, right. right. We lost her, but she was. She did a wonderful, wonderful um, chair. She did. I did. I didn't get a chance to thank her. <laughs> I, I thought maybe um, I hit a button. I thought I, I thought I actually you know, deleted her from the meeting. It happened so fast, but. <laughs> um. Uh, I think we are uh, a little behind schedule on time, but I know that there have been people waiting from um, Emily Dickinson uh, to uh, discuss their proposed project. They're still there. If they're hanging on. We can bring them into the meeting. Sure. Can you raise your hand? I, I know, Jane, I see you. Um, okay. It is. Hi again. Hello again. Hi, Jane. Hello. Thanks Hi, for Jane. your patience. Oh, Jane's, you're Jane. muted. Muted. Thank you. Um, I know that uh, your meeting is running late, so we can be um, brief, uh, but do want to. Uh, share with you some plans the Emily Dickinson Museum has. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jane Wald. I'm the executive director of the Emily Dickinson Museum. And um, I wanna thank you tonight for giving us um, a few minutes to describe a reconstruction project that we have scheduled for this year, 2024. Um, and we have a, a, a very short presentation that we can share with you if um, if I can share the screen, which I probably am able to do right now. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so let me get this set up as a, let me get this set up, set up as a share. Uh, Okay, just so to begin with, as you're probably aware, the Evergreens is listed on the state and national registers of historic places, and it's also a contributing property in the Dickinson National uh, Register Historic District and in the Dickinson Local Historic District. Um, in addition, the 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 structure and the property are protected by a preservation restriction held by the Massachusetts Historical Commission. Um, we've also received in the past some federal funding that um, involves the National Park Service and the Secretary, uh, the Department of the Interior. Um, so our course of historic approvals um, really begins here. And then it continues to the local historic district commission and then moves on to the Massachusetts Historical Commission uh, on its own authority and as the holder of our preservation restriction uh, and as the um, state historic preservation office designated by uh, the secretary of the interior and the national park service. Uh, so let me move move along just a bit here with our, here we go. Um, so um, 
our project really is our intention is to reconstruct the 19th century um, carriage house seen here in this um, roughly 1880 photograph. Um, we want at first to use this structure as uh, a, a visitor center and a museum shop uh, in order to remove functions from the rear addition of the homestead so that we can restore that section of the homestead. So, you know, at first it'll be kind of a swing space. And then ultimately the purpose of this space is to serve as a program and education space. Um, so with the various designations and protections given to the Evergreens, we plan of course, to follow the guidance of the secretary uh, of the interior uh, and it is standards for uh, reconstruction. And I can, you know, go into a few of these points that are included in those guidelines, but in the, and you can tell me if you'd like me, to, if you'd like to hear them, but in the interest of time, I'm happy to just sort of uh, move on with the presentation to show you, uh, to illustrate what it is that we intend to do. Uh, so first of all, we start with a documentation about the carriage house. Um, uh, this image comes from an 1886 lithograph, uh, what's called the bird's eye view of Amherst uh, by Lucien Burley. And um, here, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor on screen, but um, here you see the evergreens and its carriage house in a sort of a, a kind of a, an artistic license rendering. But what this does tell you is that th there's this um, central entrance to the carriage house and the suggestion of vertical siding here. Uh, then uh, there's this photograph from around 1875. Um, it's certainly, it. Uh, post dates the construction of the first congregational church in 1867 and its parish house uh, here uh, um, that came uh, slightly after the construction of the, the church. But zooming in, you can see, uh, whoops, sorry. Zooming in, you can see on the right, um, as close as we can get to uh, sort of a full image of the carriage house itself. And from this, you know, you can discern a couple of things. Um, one is what looks like um, kind of a, uh, a paint treatment or different um, pigmentation of the, of the architectural uh, details of the gable ends. Then um, another, we have our own, in our own collection, we have a few photographs of this, uh, of this carriage house from around the mid 1930s or so, but obviously, you know, vines have started to take hold. Um, it's probably not in the greatest condition. Um, and the structure was either demolished or just fell down uh, in the 1950s. So 1950s is sort of the end date of this structure. Um, here's uh, a Sanborn Insurance Company map uh, from 1910. So uh, on the left, you see sort of the general uh, geographic locational context of the Evergreens and the Carriage House. On the right, you see more of a detail. And so, you know, reading the reading the codes for these insurance maps, um, yellow, indicates a wood frame building. And you know you can see in the larger view that red indicates brick and blue indicates some kind of stone building material. Um, on the carriage house on the right hand side, you can see the number two uh, and that indicates the number of floors. Um, and there's a little mark over on the extreme right of the carriage house, which turns out to be a little circle and the circle indicates that it had a metal roof. And you can see that also on the plan for the evergreens uh, and its metal roofing material. So then, um, so apart from that documentation, there's also, you know, the existing 
um, GIS map of the evergreens in this. Uh, so this is, you know, contemporary images for now. Um, the driveway you see there is horribly out of context. I mean, it's just really not the way it exists. But um, the point here, I guess, is to show you um, in relationship to the Sanborn insurance maps, um, what is the proposed site of the of the reconstructed carriage house. And then we have um, some existing conditions. Uh, if you can see my cursor, the location of the carriage, the, the uh, site location of the carriage house and its sort of archeological features are right here, just on the north side of the path in what looks like a pretty leafy and um, uh, sort of depressed, uh, depressed area. And then on the right, this is a view from uh, the perspective of the homestead looking west at the evergreens and the carriage house at that would have uh, completely ha obscured the, the shed here, which is a um, an addition to on the north side of the Italianate evergreens. So here we get into what the uh, architects are planning. Um, uh, so this is a site plan of the, uh, the, the driveway configuration, the path between the homestead and the evergreens that was recently reconstructed just in the last two or three years, uh, and the proposed location of the carriage house itself. So I think at this point, I'd like to, um, I'd like to invite my colleague, uh, Shanti Anderhagen, who is the principal of Preservation Strategies, which has been for the last few years, kind of the preservation project manager for uh, projects at, at the Emily Dickinson Museum. And I think uh, she will help us to understand what what the design intent of this reconstruction is. And so um, Shanti, can I, can I, you, you just let me know when you'd like me to um, advance the slides. Sure, okay, well, thanks, Jane. Um, thank you all for um, uh, wading through uh, your previous um, application to hear about this, what I think is a pretty exciting project. Uh, you all know that it's a big deal to add a building to a historic district, to a historic property, especially one of uh, the stature of the Emily Dickinson Museum um, with both Emily's homestead and Austin's house, the Evergreens. So this is this is uh, a process that's been very carefully considered, I would say, um, by the museum. Um, Jane, let's move to the next slide. Um, and so uh, the architectural firm uh, that the museum is working with is EDM Studio uh, in Unionville, Connecticut. And um, we have worked through um, this design proposal pretty carefully because as Jane mentioned, we have some information about the historic carriage house, uh, but not a huge amount of information. And we have done a lot of digging. Um, a lot of people have done a lot of digging to try to find uh, physical uh, and archival uh, documentation about this building. So you've seen much of it. There's not a huge amount more. But from what we know, we certainly um, have been able to uh, confirm, extrapolate, that this was uh, a gable end building. So uh, that you'll see that in this design. Uh, we believe uh, that through renderings and um, kind of close looking at the evidence we have, that it was documentary evidence, uh, probably a board-sided outbuilding. Um, and so you see that rendered here. Uh, in terms of thinking about windows, outbuildings would have likely had some, not a huge number. So those have been introduced quite selectively. Um, on the um, side elevations and at the rear roof in a dormer that will have awning windows. Um, interestingly, um, we worked very hard on the windows. It was hard to figure out how to uh, get the right configuration because one of the goals of this 
reconstruction is to make it a very sustainable and hopefully passive house certified building. And so that meant windows that um, are uh, pretty airtight. And so uh, replicating identically historic windows um, was making uh, it nearly impossible, in fact, impossible to get that level of sustainability. Um, and the plan that we have developed, I think, is quite creative and fits very well with the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Reconstruction. Um, we are going to have a large um, glass that has uh, at the interior and at the exterior, the historic storm, wooden storm windows. So the appearance will be quite similar to the storm windows that are in select locations yep, on the Evergreen. So the appearance will be a six over six storm window. Um, and I think it will be really effective in looking um, as, as it would have historically. We are gonna use a number of modern materials uh, which is again allowed by the Secretary of the Interior Standards uh, for Reconstruction. What, what the standards are really after is uh, the appearance of uh, the historic building, um, but there is an allowance in the standards for using modern materials. Um, and this building will feature a number of those, uh, likely uh, possibly wood siding, but it we're looking at uh, an alternative called boral, which is a very um, um, uh, good modern material in terms of sustainability and maintenance long-term. Uh, standing seam roof, which is a traditional application for buildings in New England. And as I said, described the uh, windows. At the front entry, uh, there will be uh, doors that um, open and close. Um, uh, so the appearance of barn doors uh, when the building is closed and then um, opening uh, to these glass doors that will again be um, quite uh, weather tight and render the building, we hope, passive house. Um, very minimal foundation exposure. It is a poured concrete uh, slab. Um, but I think probably no more than eight inches, possibly six inches, um, right at pretty much at grade. Uh, so that's pretty much the design, very simple building. Uh, colors will be uh, in concert with the evergreens. Um, Jane, have I missed anything important about the design? I think those are the essential uh, details, yes. So you see the... Um... The elevation, some of the design details, especially the windows, um, where uh, here we've we're intending to replicate another uh, window style from the um, from the west side of the Evergreens, uh, as well as this um, six over six sort of single single plane uh, storm window. Uh, and Shanti's mentioned that the um, our desire for the materials to render it a passive house, a certified passive house, if we can achieve that. Um, I think next would be just kind of a something a little bit more artistic. Uh, if you you can see here, um, this is the current view from from Main Street, um, kind of looking up up the driveway and toward the evergreens. Um, and the architect's rendering of what is uh, proposed for the reconstruction of the carriage house uh, appears to be something more like this mm -hmm. uh, with compatibility of materials and colors and so forth. Um, so, you know, not wanting to take too much of your time tonight, um, we'll just, we can just call it here and ask um, you know, request your questions if there's anything we can clarify for you. I should say that um, one of our one of our goals, one of our hopes um, in bringing this plan to you is uh, to ask you for uh, a, a, an endorsement, uh, you know, a letter uh, that can go to the Massachusetts Historical Commission. Um, uh, you know, uh, suggesting that this project meet, meets with your approval. 
Okay. Do folks have questions? Ed, I had a question. I think it's a, more about the drawing than anything else. The lines that are coming down, vertical lines that are registering as blue lines, is that just a way to express the vertical siding on the building? Jane, can you go back to that drawing, uh, to, to the elevations, please? Because I had another comment. Uh, these lines, the vertical lines, Hetty? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's meant, I think, essentially, it's going to be board siding. So this is how the architect's rendering it. And, and I should mention, um, I think... Uh, the elevation should show that the windows have divided lights. They won't be true divided. Certainly they'll be, sim well, they'll likely be simulated. They may be true divided if we reproduce the storm windows identically, um, but those will be fixed on the building. So the building won't actually have what is what it appears here, which is plate glass. That's the exterior appearance. That's the interior window, but there will be an exterior appearance Apply, exteriorly applied storm that will have divided lights. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Other questions? I have a question. In the Sandborn map, you know, the, the way it showed the roof, it didn't show that in a later Sandborn map. And so sometimes when they would show that, it meant I thought it would mean a hip roof, you know, or like a four square roof not a gable and so um has there been has there been any consideration for that that it, the roof when it may have changed or is it hard to say well the photographs that we have all show a gable end we saw that too i mean we looked yeah. at the the 1910 and the 1916 and um but there's there's just no no evidence right. that we have found that this was ever anything but a gable end building Yeah, no, I, I, why, are, why you were talking, I looked at the sandbar maps, looked at some other buildings in town that I know are gable end, and they showed the same kind of um, crosshatch in the no, no. roof. So I don't, I don't, it was interesting. I was just trying to figure out what, what that could mean. But. Is it, uh, for some reason, I thought maybe it was an indication for an outbuilding, but. Yeah, it's not consistently applied. Yeah. yeah. Okay, other comments? I look forward to seeing the next next step. <laughs> um, yeah, Nate, my only thought about recommend a letter of recommendation for MHC is I'd need to recuse myself again. <laughs> we have enough people that we won't have a quorum vote if we vote without Madeline, right? And me. Yeah, um, you know, this isn't um, imminent, is it? Jane, I mean, it could be something that the commission, um, I mean, we could have it on a future agenda just to get a vote in a um, letter of recommendation. Is that? Yeah, I, you know, I think our our uh, sequence of steps now is uh, next to uh, make a presentation to the local historic district commission. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, then to apply immediately to the state historical commission. Um, so that's, that's our sequence, but if the, um, is the, is the local historic district commission meeting schedule known? No, no, they, um, you know, we have to hold a hearing within so many days. So if we have an application received, you know, it'd probably be sometime in like mid to late February would be, you know, I, they're trying to meet at the end of January. Uh, okay. so if, you know, you know, it's like really as needed right now. Uh, we try to have a standing meeting, but uh, you know, if an application isn't in, sometimes they delay it. So, um, yeah, okay. I think they, yeah, yeah. We've wanted to be certain of our site plan before um, going forward to the local historic district commission, and I think we're we're pretty much I think we're pretty much there now. Mm -hmm. So we'll get that wheel in motion, and I I do think that gives the historical commission some time, you know, for another meeting with a quorum. Yeah, we can, and just like we did with the Jones Library, we can make sure that Madeline's there to 
um, as vice chair to take the helm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so does that mean we should come back to you when Madeline is here so we can share information with Madeline? Yeah, that's true. She should be here for the, for, or well, I mean, she could also just watch this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think she could watch this, and then if it's in a, in a, um, on the next agenda and she can attend, then um, it would just be, um, I don't think Jane, I don't think you or someone has to be here. I think we could just have it as an agenda item. I mean, if you'd like to be, you could, but I don't think we need another presentation. It would just be, you know, a, 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 a motion and a vote. Yeah, we we just I, I think we'd be favorable to it. It's just a question of having a, an authentic vote. Well put. Okay. Well put. That's a good plan then. <clears throat> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for um uh hanging in there with us for um, yeah. a long time. <laughs> yeah. thank, thank you for a good presentation. I think it will be an addition to that property. Yep. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next time. We'll be in yep. touch. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay. Moving along here. Uh, we have public comment now. So if there's anyone in the public who feels the need to provide a comment at this point, you may raise your hand. There's a you know five attendees. I don't see any hands raised. Yep, seeing no hands. Seeing no hands raised. Um, I will uh, move to unanticipated items, of which I have none. We don't have an unanticipated item. Okay. Uh, I think the last thing that we need to do is uh, set a date for our next meeting before we adjourn. Oh yeah, sorry, just one unanticipated. Um, oh okay. Uh. 45 and 55 South Pleasant Street. I, I'm still trying to get a site visit. And so I'll um, I'll email the commission um, probably this week to see if there's times when we could get into those buildings. Okay. okay. Um, looking at Mondays still. Um, Fifth would be roughly a month from now. Yep. Any objections there? No. no. It's it's good. It's good for me. Okay. And does anyone have? I'm gonna have to ask Madeline too. Does anyone have any objections to the twelfth? No. no. Okay. So um, hold those for now, and I will get back to you on which day it'll be. Does that work for you, Nate? Yes. Yeah. I was trying to look at my calendar. Let me just hold it up. Um, generally Mondays are good for me, so I don't, um, it's just slow to load right now. Yeah, that looks good. The fifth is good. Okay. What about the 12th? Just want to check with Madeline and she's not here. So yep, 12th is good as well. Okay, great. So I will get back to you guys uh, hopefully within the day. And with that, I think that do you have a do you have a comment, Hetty? No. No, no, just to say thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Yes, well, thank you. Good, good meeting, everyone. Thank you. Yep. So 924. We are adjourned and we'll see you in February. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.